That sounds like some Tomb of Annihilation. That's exactly what it was. Zombie dragon or zombie uh, T Rex. Nice. Well, yeah, yeah, that would have been a few years ago. That's right. But uh, I played a lot of that season, and it's it's pretty fun. There's a whole season of adventures that correlates with the the book too. So it's pretty fun how they would do that over the years. But uh, anywho. Uh, the way that they've done like rewards and stuff like that has definitely shifted since then. Uh, and you know, it, it is what it is, but it's probably better now and we'll be able to get you up to speed quite easily. Um, first and foremost, I guess it, you could find it from the adventures league, like homepage, or I can send you a copy, however you need to get it. Let me know. Uh, but there is like a, a log sheet for your adventure. Uh, I don't know if you already picked that up somewhere or not or anything, but you, ah, yeah, you I actually did, just downloaded it. Oh, nice. Sweet. So you want to, if you, you know, if you could find a form fillable one, I think I might have one buried somewhere, but otherwise there's a website you can record it onto called like adventures league or something. And, the, but anywho, yeah, you definitely want to definitely want to be keep tracking of that. Uh, and I'll post the codes and stuff all around the place, but I definitely do like to start with them as well. Um, so quickly first the original point before i go too far away was i'm streaming because the way that they changed up the rewards that you gain is for dming back in the day you used to just get some of what other people got and blah 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 there's been different iterations but the way they do it now is i got me like a little packet of rewards i can check off if i acquire the hours and you can get more hours if you stream so that's it Uh, so don't ever feel like your your likeness or words are being broadcasted to the millions or don't you know don't ever hold back we're all here to have fun uh hopefully a committed like recurring group so we can kind of get to know each other and loosen up it's not like you're we don't have to totally be 100 percent pc all the time as long as uh we're not offending anybody of course first and foremost we can't do that you know so we'll always keep it pretty clean on the on the themes but if you want to crack a joke or something as long as it's not at anybody's expense uh, it's not going to bother me any. Um, that being said, if you, anything does come up that kind of rubs you wrong or you're like, well, that was, you know, something like you, you wouldn't have known that about me, but that actually does kind of bother me in a way or something like that. Uh, just, you know, you can type it out and be like safety tool uh, or you could say like, hey, you know, we're all cool. So you could just say, like, hey, you know, that's not cool. Um, or you could message me personally and I'll handle it wherever we just move on with the game and everything's fine. So that's usually how I handle okay. that stuff. Um and you know the service hours if i'm recording you guys get those too so if you're curious more about the document you'll actually get time for it for my streaming too um maybe not enough for a reward tonight but over the next session you definitely would have enough for to give your character something uh greenbrier actually already has a pretty awesome dragon lance specific item but she was gracious enough to uh to not stun you all with it yet as uh, as you guys just don't have any magic items yet and so uh, I appreciate that again, Greenbrier, for holding back. But she did get that from the service rewards, so just using that as an example. All right. There we go. Awesome. So DM spiels out of the way. We are, you know, streaming, safety tools, all that good stuff. Uh, welcome in, Tino. So oh, hello. What's up, man? Perfect timing. We had someone maybe join us at the start, and then I guess they just randomly backed out and were like, screw this or something. I don't know. Maybe I'll hear from them later. (laughs) (laughs) No worries. But that usually happens. (laughs) There's always one. Yeah, it can happen. But it was all pretty last minute and stuff, too. But it's been a busy day, so I didn't really have time to chat with them as much as I should have earlier and stuff. But uh, if you want to create your character on Roll20... Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm. Can can you resend the uh, the row twenty? It's like enough for me. Mm-hmm, yeah. Yeah, I think sometimes I might do that. So it'll be back in that channel again, and I would keep it a little bit handy for the thread that we normally uh, have been using to talk about this stuff as I'm going to post some little handouts and things there throughout the night as well. So I'll be just saying like, Hey, check the thread. And that's kind of what I'm referring to as our dragon Lance thread, uh, when appropriate. But yeah, Mr. Tino, just uh, go ahead and get your, your last ready in the background there. Uh, no worries. Um, it'll be a minute before, you know, you're going to need that token really, really. But so you take, take your time there and just keep keep getting it ready. Uh, and no, I haven't seen anything about any new service rewards yet. So I think the way the rule for that goes is that you could still apply them to the old document until they release the new document. 
or you could just save them for the next document, which I, that's probably what I'm going to do because I've already claimed like five plus two weapons from the repeatable and checked everything off on the document. So I'm just like, do, 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 like. <laughs> okay. Well, let's dive into it. I appreciate um, all you guys' patience here getting started. And of course, in the future, it'll uh, not really be like that. Uh, we do have planned for a little bit extra time for the session, so I don't think we'll really need it, but I guess we used a little bit of it here in the front end. So again, appreciate y'all's patience. Uh, if you know anything about Kryn at all, which is the world of Dragonlance, like the actual planet, you know, Toril is Forgotten Realms, Kryn is Dragonlance, uh, looks like we are going to be starting off in a nation called Estwild. Or I was trying to think of how to say that necessarily. One of y'all might have read it before, but Estwild... Probably that. Probably Estwild. It's got an E on the end, but uh, Estwild. That's how we'll say it. And this takes in place in the year 311 AC. Um, the only thing that I really know about that is that it will be prior to the events in Shadow of the Dragon Queen, which I'm sure is pretty obvious as these are uh, prequels. So that being yeah, said... Yeah, pri prior to the War of the Lamps. <laughs> it's coming. But I do have some pretty fun stuff planned for us, too. Uh, there is another, like, official Dragonlance season being released. It's called... Uh, dude, uh, I know the code is called VOTU. I'm trying to think what that stands for. I forgot. But uh, there's actually only a couple modules out now. They're the same level as these. I'm kind of thinking about maybe doing those after these before we do the campaign. But, of course, uh, we'll see. We'll, let's just do these first, and we'll see what happens next. But I already bought them and everything. They're ready to go. It's all Dragonlance stuff. Uh so we'll see if we go to that, but that would that would be kind of cool if we do. Uh, that being said, uh, Mr. Torval, I do appreciate you, sir, because you, you read the hooks and you used one, uh, and that's just awesome. Appreciate you. Had some <laughs> Not a problem. So if anybody else kind of wants to follow Torval's footsteps, um, you're going to be working with this gentleman named Ispin, and uh, perhaps you are from Calamon, another kind of you know city, nation type place. Uh, I believe Calumet is just a city. but still, It is. St yeah, still just learning this stuff. Uh, but perhaps you have been influenced by Ispin and his wild antics to follow him into the wilds, or perhaps you've been equally adventurous and you're just uh, getting a call from him to come meet up, um, such as Torval there. I'll let him explain that one a little more in detail. Or perhaps bringing you to this adventure, um, Ispin is planning this excursion and he needs a guide. So perhaps you are from Estwild, which is a little more wilder. Perhaps you grew up in a tribe there, um, and you're seeing this as an opportunity to make some coin. Kind of this goofy, uh, know-nothing of an individual shows up in the wilds claiming, I'm an adventurer, with very much seemingly like this is his first adventure. Uh, and you're thinking like, oh, I could definitely make some coin off this fool, and, uh, and who knows, maybe have some fun along the way. Uh, or if you have your own version of uh, events to lead you here to meet up with Ispin the Green, uh, please feel free to tell me uh, as we will start off here in a camp outside of some ruins. Uh, you guys have been traveling for several days throughout Estwild and you have finally came upon these ruins. It's been pretty inhospitable terrain um, around Estwild, east of Calamon. Uh, and even still, most of the people you have come across on the road or the tribes uh, are perhaps unfriendly if you are uh, you know have a Salomnian background um, apparently since the days of Istar there's been a little bit of a rivalry there if you would think of it or just some tension um, but anywho in Estwild uh, you're kind of uh, in the northern reaches of Ancelon uh, not too far away from from Calamon Bay and Calamon itself uh, it gives a lot of information here, which hopefully will make more sense later, but yeah, bordering are some other nations, Limish, Throt, Nightland, and on the western border, uh, or those are on the western, while on the eastern is Taman Busuk, and Nordmar, and the northeast <coughs> border. So, not the, usually the rundowns I give at the start of these, but hopefully this stuff will make more sense <laughs> as we all get more uh, acclimated. Uh, it looks like if you did want to be from Estwild, the natives here hail from either the Lor Thai tribe or the Lahushan tribe. Uh, although those Lahushans are rumored to practice cannibalism. Um, 
probably not great, but there are also some wild mountain barbarians uh, out there in Eswild as well, and even some more urban type folk from uh, the south shore. But most outsiders deal with these mountain barbarians who will be foot soldiers, mercenaries, and such. Um, so who knows? You know, if you had more of a wilder background, you might be able to place yourself there. But here you are in this camp outside the ruins. You hear crickets chirping and swarms of gnats buzzing in the swampy air around you as you sit and start to uh, s stir up the campfire waiting for a meal to cook. Uh, as you kind of eye each other, just starting to finally feel comfortable around um, some of these new faces after it's been a couple days of travel, uh, you see the man who brought you all here, uh, the leader of your little band, Ispin, who is a young bard from the city of Calamon. Um, he's put out his call for adventures to help explore and plunder these ancient ruins in the wilds of Estwild. Uh, you see him kind of stride up, uh, a little a little goofy looking, um, still coming into his own as a man, um, a little thin, thinner, you know, not quite built up the muscle of the road yet. Uh, and he's got these ginger locks shaved on one side of his head, uh, kind of um, bouncing uh, carelessly on the other side about mid link he kind of swats at these gnats and such and he says wow you know i didn't expect the last few days to be so boring you know there was this one time i came out here and uh you know there was these uh, band of crazy tribes that i had to subdue um with a little bit of song <laughs> he's like you can tell he's definitely just trying to uh, rig all you guys with a, a tall tale. And he's like, oh, okay, I know, you've heard it. But look, guys, I, I, I know it, it's a little slow now, but things are going to get very interesting soon. You know, there's going to be these treasures, uh, pre-cataclysm ruins. I mean, this is going to be amazing. Uh, and this is about the hundredth time he's told you that, of course, so far. <laughs> and he says, all right, yeah, I know you've heard enough from me. Um, it's been the green and he starts to strum a little lazily on his lute as he takes a look over and he says, you know, I heard about those strange rabbit folk, uh, but I'll admit in all my long travels, I just <coughs> I've really never met one yet. Um, well, could you tell me about yourself there, Blitz? And, uh, you know, I'd love to know more about your people, where you come from. Uh, and yeah, just general character introduction, um, truly. But if you, you know, you, we can chat it out and then also if you want to fill us in with anything mechanically um your aspirations for the future of this campaign perhaps with your character um and you know anything you want this is you have the floor blitz all right so do you, you guys look at blitz and he's like oh yeah 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 i was i was paying attention definitely um 100 as you see like fiddling with some designs in a notebook he's like oh yeah um name is blitz you know um you know, B-I-L-T-Z, don't mix it up. You got to do it for the copyright purposes. But yes, I am from Sylvanusty Woods. You know, family out there, trees or what's left of it. Um, but yeah, you know, big family. I'm the small guy and I decided, you know, I can't really spread my wings, you know, when I'm stuck at home with family praying to some god who never answers them. So I decided to set out. And, you know, you kind of remind me of them with all that singing and happiness. But who knows? I'm sure this will work out well. But all it means, you guys are here to be proof of concept for all of my giz gizmos, so I might ask you to play test some things. If it explodes, I am sorry. I'm not like the kinder. My things work 80% of the time, and you will not lose a limb yet. Um, but my name is Blitz. I'll be your artificer. I'll fix things. I'll make things, and I'll make sure you remember this name by the end of this adventure. But that is my character. He, he's like la lazily kind of plucking a tune like ding dong ding dong like hardly even making sense and as you like go on your spiel uh, especially with the uh, play test of the gizmos it's like a drunk as he stops all of a sudden like looks over and he's like hmm a kindred spirit I think uh, but I hate to say it, I almost had the same idea with you guys <laughs> although really we're just really gonna be rich by the end of this <laughs> uh, I'm interested to see what you got in your pack there or, or those little doodles um Although I feel like I may regret that. <laughs> uh, you there, miss. Uh, yeah, I'm very, very happy to have you on the crew. Uh, please tell me a little bit more. I, I think you said earlier your name was, was Green? Greenbrier? Um, hey, I'm Ispin the Green. That's an awful cool coincidence. 
Uh, yes. Uh, do you see before you a half elf? Uh, she is dressed in mostly greens and browns. Um, she says, "Yes, my name is Greenbrier. Uh, I am a fledgling druid that is a uh, wilderness guide." Uh, this is my first trip out into the world, so uh, I will try not to get anybody lost. Uh, you know, okay. originally uh, I uh, hail from uh, southern Urgoth, but uh, I decided I needed a change of scenery, so that is why I'm here in Estwild. You know, I feel a little bad now. I should be honest. Um, this is my first time getting out too, but I want to be a, a bold hero for Salamnia. Um, yeah, I will be. Uh, you know, but I appreciate you joining me as we both get started here. Uh, I feel like we're going to do great things. Um, I have a lot to talk about with these ruins. Um, but of course, uh, it's not time for business yet. Um, pass me some of that mead there. Uh, it doesn't look like you're, you're drinking too much of it. Uh, what did you say your name was? Uh, Torval? Good to see you. Uh, just another regular old person like myself, I suppose. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> it's weird you remember me there. It's been, I met you when we were kids, well, teenagers. And some of the stuff we got into. Oh. Oh, you're going by your Surprise. full name these days. Torvi, Surprise. get over here. <laughs> Yeah, my parents seriously did not approve of me of joining the Knights, as you can have probably figure out. No, with them being dishonored and such after right at the Cataclysm, because they stood with the uh, the uh, priests. I forgot what their actual name was. Hmm. Dude, they'd possibly cause the Cataclysm or get blamed for it. Sounds like some digging I'm gonna have to do as well. The, the king, they were king, the king priests of Ishtar. That's what they were. Ishtar, yeah, 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 yeah. He like looks at you with wide eyes. He's like, the, yeah. you didn't have anything to do with that, right? No, and then supposedly none of my family did. Although we, I can only go back as far as my great grandfather and find anybody who was a member of the knightly order. Oh, whew. All right, you know, I'm, just, I'm not trying to have it start it with a bad reputation uh, necessarily, but you know, I, I man, I, I'll admit I, I lost touch after you joined up. I hadn't heard about you in years, uh, you know, and I guess things move pretty fast. Uh, but a hey, Torvi, oh man, I can't believe what we're about to start kicking up in here. And, uh, he really starts picking up his tune uh, as I think. Uh, we have Miss Nix. Do you have a Do you have a token we could see? I'm still. I, I just downloaded the picture. I'm still working on that one. I can send it to you here in a second. Okay. Well, go ahead and uh, do your best to visually uh, describe her for our benefit, if oh, you will. Uh, and then, of course, uh, I, I, mechanically and stuff, if however you see fit. As he looks and he says, uh, "A Kinder. Good. Good. Um, you know." I guess we're gonna be good if we we got to figure out some tricky situations or any any tight spots or anything. Um, you know, just no funny business or anything. I heard all what some of the things you guys get, can get into. Uh, <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. Well, um, hi, I'm next. Uh, if any of your belongings end up in my pockets, I am very sorry. I do not intend to do this. It's just when I see something shiny, I have to grab it and put them in my pockets, and I don't intend to keep them or sell them. It's just, I like how they look. Um, so I apologize right now. I will do my best. Um, Nyx is a small little kinder, uh, pointed ears, red hair, uh, not much to it, uh, a sorcerer, or a beginning sorcerer. She, uh, she doesn't know exactly how she ended up quite here, but she remembers that she saw a man riding by with some coin, and I heard the jingle jangle and started following, and eventually I just wound up here looking for an adventure. Um, hoping I fit in. <laughs> That's all I got for right now. 
Blitz is definitely checking inventory right now. <laughs> <laughs> definitely. I don't think I have anything. I'm sorry. Not right now. <laughs> You know, they told me don't take a kinder for this, but I saw your readout uh, as you responded to my call out for the job, and I'll admit, you just touched a part of my heart there, Nick. So, uh, I think we're all pretty much in the same boat for this. Uh, I'll admit, I am your fearless leader, and I hope you guys are, are with me and you'll stand behind me in, in the times to come. Uh, and yet, uh, I feel like we're all going to have to become equals, and you know, I'm no further ahead than you guys. I know I... I might have fooled you over these last few days with my tall tales and my great exploits and things, but um, I'm, I hope you're really looking out for me there. Uh, I thought we'll come into any problems. Uh, and he kind of like grows quiet for a second as he sets the loot down and kind of looks at you a little more solemnly uh, with his brown eyes there. And you see that your encampment is a bit out in the open, not a lot of cover in this area in general. Uh, there are some scrub brush and kind of large stones blanketing the low hills around you. And you kind of have this quiet moment for a second, uh, noticing how clear the night sky is overhead. Um, this entrance to the ruins that he kind of gazes past you uh, in, in, to the back of the camp looking at uh, is really just an, unremar an, an unremarkable hole in the hill kind of to the left of the camp. Um, and so under the half moon and tapestry of stars, uh, the conversation continues um, along with the crackling of the campfire and the chirping of those crickets. He says, the map I've found, it's a pre-cataclysm and it leads to a small temple to a now forgotten god. Well, you know, I was just in the market and I came across this thing at a stall and heck, that's how you start an adventure, I think, you know? You just got to take a chance on something, and, and it's sure to lead us to a great fortune. Uh, well, of course, I didn't just run off with it. I had to know a little more. I went and I brought it to some sages at the temple there in Calamar. Uh, in Calaman, my bad. And uh, they told me, though, that the, the god of this temple was somehow connected to dragons. Well, that's got to be something. This connection, I, I think that there's just has to be a treasure here i mean dragons always have hordes and plus if they're gonna have this temple to a dragon <coughs> deity i mean what would you build up to give uh, i'm thinking there's definitely gonna be some gold there for us um, also i don't know if you guys know uh, it does look like a couple of you are, have have it about you um, perhaps i shouldn't even say anything but in the times before the cataclysm magic was much more prevalent so who knows? Maybe we'll even find some sort of little magic relic in there. Now look, um, I know I'm the leader, but even still, I'll split any treasure I find equally with you guys. Uh, what do you think about that? Hey, I'm just trying to put this on my resume when I apply for the Mages of High Sorcery, so that's the main thing out of this. So that I've heard about that test. As long as you're a good reference, that's all I need. But funds are needed for an invention, so yeah, make sure we split fairly. Ah, yes, after I'm a great hero of Salamnia, already well on my way, of course, uh, surely I would give you a, a reference, and I mean, that'd probably be worth more than any gold we'll find. <laughs> All right, chums. So what's on your mind? Uh, anything else before we bed up for the night? Uh, we're going to have a big day tomorrow. Wait, so right now we have the Druid, a Sorcerer, an Artificer, and what else? Paladin. Paladin, okay. Well, I do, the, I do give the Paladin a side look like, wow, I can't believe you follow gods, they don't even answer you, but you know, to each their yeah, own. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, that was always the weird thing, of course, you know, in the in the books, the, the first, the cleric to come back was like the center of the first book, so. Well, yeah. I won't tell you how to live your life, but. I guess Her name's Silverman or something. something like that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah she, I she, remember she, right. A question: What if we're going to a, t a temple to a uh, some old deity? Uh, which one is it? Do we know? You know, I, I wish I knew a little more. I wish I did, but I'm sure we're bound to find out, uh, as well as 
you know, what else we could find. I mean, look at that hole. Look at that hole in the hill there. Look how promising it is. And it's really just an unremarkable dark hole. He's like, oh, it's going to be great. Well, I've done things with lower success margins than this, so. <laughs> Let's go. But I guess you're not going now. We're going to take a rest, and then we'll go in the morning. That's about the looks at it. I, I did get that token there. Um, Tino, if you... Uh, you could do it like you've done done with the others if you edit your sheet and you could upload the token and stuff. And now would be a perfect time to, as uh, we're about to jump to another map. And uh, yeah, so, you know, after uh, a pretty jovial night, uh, and at this rate, nothing really truly is bad truly bad has happened um, you know and you guys have your own histories and, and backgrounds and such you know perhaps you've seen harsher times but uh, it's probably still in you know as fledglings in ways uh, you guys are thinking like man this adventuring stuff is pretty easy this is fun you know you're getting to know some, some pretty similar folks to yourselves uh, like it's like summer camp you know you're like oh where are you from uh, oh you're about that uh, well you know normally I wouldn't hang out with you but you know, maybe it's kind of cool, right, for now or something. And you're, all right, yeah. And then you're going to be in the best of friends. I will tell the kinder that I also speak kinder speak. So, you know, I'll know if he's plotting to rob us. <laughs> she. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> no, that's okay. <laughs> I don't know if they're trying to rob us. Um, uh, I'm not sure what voice is. <laughs> yeah, that's the guy. Yeah, it's coming out sounding like Michael Jackson. So, <laughs> oh my bad. I don't want Getting your token uh, finalized, and uh, what's your HP? Oh, five. Oh, hey guys. The most important question is, who's Paladin's obviously number one for the front line. Who else is going to join him? I'm guessing is the Druid going to be in the back or one in the front? Probably in the back for now. Her AC is only thirteen. All right, Paladin, I'm joining you up front. All right, I appreciate that. You will still be more front than I will be. But <laughs> I'll, be I'll be right behind you. So, Nix, what was the HP? Uh, my, my HP was five. How's it five? That's so low. There's no way. Yeah, I, 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 don't, uh -huh. I, don't, have, I don't have any armor either, so yeah, I'm How's that my possible? HP. So, uh, I have no idea. Do you have a negative con modifier? Oh, uh, I shouldn't. I'd have to check for sorcerer, but I bet it's like a D8. A D6. It's a D6. So you should at least have six. Or unless you, his con did, you only, did you make con your dump? Uh, con is not my dump. My... Okay. <laughs> no, my negative. My negative is only in strength. So what's your what's your constitution real quick and we'll just get you marked up. It's fourteen. So that'd be a plus two. Eight. So you'd have eight eight to start. Okay. Because you'll take the full dice, which is a six, and then you'll take your con mod too, so eight. But yeah, the, you know, not only uh we got a you know, new druid in the mix, we got a new sorcerer, so uh hey, it's never a bad time to try out a new class <laughs> and learn a new thing. <laughs> And, you know, those of us that might have played them, um, of course, we can always kind of help out as we go, as long as we do everything tastefully and, you know, try not to step on anyone's toes <laughs> or anything. But, uh, anywho, that's just my little DM spiel, I guess. But you should be all good to go, Nyx, like the, uh, like the art. And then, uh, without further ado, you climb into a very nondescript hole. But there will be a little more description. And, of course... Um, I think I might have cut someone off. Hold on there. Boop. All right, there's the crew. Okay, so in the morning, it's been rises up, fresh as a daisy. Oh, my favorite times in the morning. God, I don't know why people hate this. 
Uh, and look, guys, as some of you are like staring daggers, probably looking for the, the coffee tin or however you, you know, get your jump in the morning. Uh, he pulls out a kind of a raggedy looking map and you can see sure enough indicating there's a little temple lying beyond a small hole following the direction looks to be this hill and of course it looks the same as any of the other hills in the area so really pinpointing this exact specific location without any sort of uh, you know note would have been quite difficult uh, and yet here you are uh, as it spins like come on guys and definitely all you see after that is his uh, rear end as he climbs into the hole <laughs> into this tight tunnel leading downward about 10 feet or so uh, before it opens up into a dimly lit 10 by 10 chamber the back wall contains an inscription and is engraved with the head of a dragon uh, as you guys each kind of stuff your way in there and, and make a rough formation here uh, Ispen exclaims in reverence as he points to the thing like very obviously this is it <laughs> Uh, the chamber is quite silent here, smelling of earth. Uh, although daylight is filtering into the tunnel and chamber from above you, uh, generating some dim light. Okay. I think I like the um, end of dying. It's just gone up, guys. Um, this looks like a temple, right? Temples usually have jars full of shiny stuff. I don't know what happened to my character sheet. I may need to reload it. Okay, you know, I've been I was having a little hard time with Roll Twenty and Discord at the start myself, so maybe it's just one of those nights where things are a little buggy for no reason. Uh, that being said, um, it's been kind of looks and like. You know, everything he does is with a bit of a dramatic fashion as he like hunches over, you know, to where he's just inches away and like narrows his eyes real dramatically. And he's like, look, guys, there's words here. And sure enough, there's a little inscription on the back wall. Uh, and this is one of those points where I'll read it out. But, you know, if you do want to. Oh, that's a cool uh, thing you posted there, Kaylin. I'll pin that. The map. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Might save that for my own. Sources. Yeah, I have the one from the back of the book. Oh, so the big fold out one. Nice. But. Wait, sorry, question. Only only thing for me is um, time wise. Compared to the hardcover, are we like uh, like like 30 years before or, or just like five? I'm not just I'm trying to understand the gap. So I think making your characters kind of young probably is a little smarter, at least for now. And like uh, for uh, Greenbrier there, she had a question as well in the background, kind of asking like, hey, I kind of, you know, took a note from the book about dot, dot, dot. Uh, but you could think of this more of like a flashback in a sense for your character uh, rather than like current time. And okay. I guess I'm not a hundred percent on the amount of years, but I'm thinking probably more on the. Andy's vague, so it's just more. This is like a younger version of him. Right. So this is like you okay. were just just starting off, and you, especially for Torval, like you knew you knew him and stuff. So he was like a friend. You're like, hey, I'm not there trying to do something different. I'll meet up with this dude and stuff. Uh, and then of course later on there'll be more stories to tell. But everyone is like almost juvenile at this point in some ways. Like we're all just some goofy, like young adults, basically. Like this yeah. dude, uh, Ispin right now is twenty. Time jump later? Huh? Are we gonna time jump later or something? Or or what, uh, what's going on? I think so. Yeah. This is the uh, intro. So it's him when he's younger. So I was just trying to wonder how younger is he. But it, um, I got to uh, picture him like a flashback, and it's fine. Right, because it sounds like at least two of y'all know, and I didn't want to mention it. It, it. Obviously, it makes more sense thematically to mention that because you have the question of like, am I young right now or what? You know, because I imagine myself being this age or whatever. But that is important, I realize. But I didn't want to mention it because it is kind of spoiler. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm not mentioning anything either. I just want to at least like have an, like a, a guesswork. So it's not a big spoiler though, because if you take one look at the book, I mean, it's like, boom, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> so it's really not that big of a spoiler, but, uh, and, and I'll just say, and it sounds like a couple of y'all know, of course, this is been green shield. The whole point of these modules is to give you like a very strong connection to him. And the start of the book 
starts with him in like a very big way. Uh, and so I'll just leave it at that for now. <laughs> But sure enough, I, I posted it there, and uh, you know we're gonna start off with a, a quite a few riddles and the such. Uh, so I, I hope y'all brought y'all's thinking caps on. Um, but as you kind yeah. of are in this dim room now, kind of a little bit of dust kind of swaying uh, in the light that you do see, um, kind of as you kind of adjust to this, you know, not in you know bright morning daylight anymore. Uh, you do see this inscription uh, that he like so obviously points out. And sure enough, you can read it. I sent that to uh, sent to you guys. He's like, only the enlightened will be allowed to enter. And he like knocks on the door and he's like, hello, the enlightened one has arrived. Of course. <laughs> Why isn't it working? And he's, he turns to you guys. See, I, I wonder which sages you went to, buddy, but I think you might need to try a different way. Um, is there a chance I can use a religion roll to see what... Uh dragon the the temple's dedicated to oh uh, sure it would probably be a pretty tough role but if you could like nail it i'll tell you probably not but it's worth a shot oh nine probably not See, now or, no 12 excuse me yeah, I'm gonna have to reload on roll 22, but coming back in. But yeah, with the 12, you're not sure. All you, no. what you do know though, is that, uh, you know, a lot of these gods uh, and such, you could say, or not even necessarily gods, but uh, during the Age of Might, these dragons uh, really, you know, disting distinguish themselves, uh, especially in the Second Dragon War, uh, and you know, of course, in other times and things, but. Yeah, you know, they would go out there and do all sorts of things. Paladine would even, um, you know, give some some blessings and things here and there. And so you're not sure exactly who this would tie to, but, you know, there was probably more than one of these kind of little so-called deities, you could say, that had, you know, groups of worshipers. Uh, yeah. That are now just lost to time. Okay. So cultists. Yeah, okay. Why roll 20 be so slow? Wait, I want to ask the paladins, hey, so you know, which one do you follow? Uh, Kildror. Kildra? I want to pronounce that right. Don't worry. No one's going to write for the past 300 years, so I think you're fine. Kiri Joleth, the, uh... Oh, the holy bison. Lord, uh... Yes. That's good. Well, that's good. That's why you're in the front. Okay. And so what do you guys think about the, um, you know, the, the riddle here? Any kind of... I'm going to cast light. Okay. And so you uh, have a little <laughs> light it... appear in your hand. Did anything happen? And you see a secret door lower to the north. And it looks like I'm back in. Don't worry. Okay, we also DM speaking to you as just like as a player. Mm -hmm. I know most of the book. I have no idea about this stuff. So that was a guess. So I thought I was going to look stupid for a second. Um, but I. So we see, the, we see the door open up and cool. I mean, I guess that worked. Wow, these guys are basic. No hidden lovers. <laughs> I mean, uh, I mean. You seem disappointed, but that was pretty cool what you did there. Uh, oh, man, I wish I could make a little light in my hand. That'd sure be handy, especially down here where I think it's about to get pretty dark. And, of course, yeah. without the little light in your hand as you go into this next room, uh, it, it would be pitch black. Well, I can't play them. They, they weren't thinking all that much, but let's go through. Oh, you know All right. I've, I'm really good at helping others, though, and, uh, of course, uh, leading. Yes, follow him. That's what I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> Sam, I had the guy with the shield. Always a good idea. It's funny that you mentioned that, but we'll get there. As uh, the tunnel from the entrance here slopes gently downward into the first room, the small room is made of rough stone, and you do see an engraved stone pillar resting in the center 
Uh, it does seem to be kind of carved out of the same stone as as everything around you. Pretty r good, you know, unmarked rough stone and floor, kind of packed dirt uh, where available, you can see. Uh, nothing too fancy down here. Everything is pretty quiet, silent, you know, getting a little more damp, earthy smell. Definitely dark in here. So if you're keeping that light in your hand, of course, there's that. And then to uh, to continue, of course, you see this pillar. The only remarkable thing in the room. Uh, quickly, it's been like shoves by you guys, and he's like, "Look, guys, a pillar." Uh, let me read it for you. I saw that. I saw it first. It's only natural I should. And he says, <clears throat> "Fortune favors the." Huh? And he looks at the east face of the pillar as it has an engraving depicting a warrior striking down his foe. Uh, and he's like, wait a second. And you like see him like, you know, peek around awkwardly uh, towards the north side of the pillar. And he's like, over here, there's like a guy reading a book. It looks kind of like a scholarly person. And, uh, and then he definitely does kind of like lean over even further until he like nearly falls over. And he's like, oh, and like picks himself up and walks over a couple steps. Uh, <clears throat> And then uh, you see on this pillar, uh, it kind of looks like a peasant entering uh, a dark cave um, with like nothing in his hands, but like a determined, uh, you know, look on his face, worry in his eyes, perhaps. And as we would proceed to make a little more sense in my words, I, th I should have a handout for all of these except for one didn't quite come through uh, the correct way, but anywho. Depends or no, you will be needed. Uh, but anyway, so it's fortune favors thee, and then you do see like three kind of uh, artworks printed there. Mm -hmm. What do you guys think fortune favors? The bold? Oh, that would make a great song. Strong. And as you guys are like thinking it out, uh, you he just starts picking at his lute and he's like fortune favors the bold this will be a song that goes down for old and just keeps it on going as you guys try to mentally muscle through it with that in the background i'm actually at a loss for this one guys what do you think it is i'm not sure Hey, Paladin, go hit the go hit the rock and and tell me if, if that works. <laughs> Sometimes some. That's probably the awesome. the mountain with the hiking person. I'll give him a minute or two to to jump back in on his own, but uh, he fell out of the chat. We'll see, Derpanzer, our lovely Paladin Tor Torvi Torvi, where you at, man? Torvi, hey, wake up! Last one went down. Yeah, and maybe I'll come back in a sec. I'll give him a minute or two. But uh, <laughs> he looks at it again, and he's like, hmm, this one looks like a dude hitting another dude. Odd, weird. This one looks like a dude reading a book. Uh, they tried to make me do that a few times. Not not very successful. And then over here, uh, there's someone who looked like going into a place much like this. Uh, hmm. Maybe someone else is here looking for treasure, too, is what that means. Uh, anyways. And so you have a torch lit. You pull out and light a torch, looking at the Explorer one, which definitely is um, a peasant entering a dark cave without a light. He doesn't really have anything in his hand or anything at all as he kind of, like, strides into the cave by the looks of it. Um, and so you stand there with your torch in your hand, and Blitz has this little light in his fuzzy paw, and Ispin looks at you guys and he's like, you know what, this seems like a great time for us all to sing a song together. And what, pray tell, would be the song of choice? He looks at you guys expectantly, which really is just, you feel the impending need to hurry up and figure this one out before uh, you end up in sing a long time with Ispin, like you've been <laughs> the, the past couple days. Well if it's showing the peasant without a light, maybe we should put the lights out and something will show up. Okay. I will turn off light. I will douse the torch. 
Lights out, oh, hands up, let's this is, party. This is a good time for the extender to go through pockets. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> I, I, I will not. I will not. I, I, I'm trying to respect my, um, everybody's wishes, but, oh, it's itching. It's all dark. It's itching. <laughs> Wait, why don't we just go past the brick? Like, do we have to stay here and look at it, or do we just keep going? Uh, oh, there, no, sorry, there's nothing on the wrong. Yeah, there's no, um, there's no obvious exit. But, so, right, but when the lights go out, uh, you hear like a soft like, <laughs> from Nick says they're like, oh, shit. <laughs> and then Ispen is like, <laughs> he's like I, I think that did it. As you hear like a, and I slide over. Uh, and, I mean, it is dark right now, uh, but you feel like you kind of, Heard something in this direction. More impressed how they made this work. So that's what I want to find out, guys. Who can see in the dark? Uh, Greenbrier can see in the dark. All right, I'm just gonna hold on to you to, to the edge of your cloak. I can't see, so can you help me with this? Sure. So as she passes each person, she'll grab their hand and have them, like, hang on to her cloak as she walks forward. You know, when I, I imagined like it, it going down into a dark dungeon, it was exactly like this. Everyone holding hands and going through and having a great time. This is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> they seem to have kept this part out of the stories, I guess. I don't yeah, even this, know why they this, would. This didn't make it in the brochure. <laughs> I'm already starting a song about this one. Uh, happy friendship time. Woo! Just me and my buds. And ah, oh, that treasure's got to be around the next corner. I'm going to work on night vision goggles next. Okay. So it looks like it's been uh, took the chance to hold hands with the the cute kinder. <laughs> he's like, God, the lights come on. He's like, oh, I just was making sure she wasn't pocketing anything. <laughs> but all right, you guys all right. I think we're around. past that door, so we could probably do a light spell again, maybe. All right, I will cast light. <laughs> Alarm goes off. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, you you're able to cast the light again, and yeah, you definitely have that moment of like, uh, like what's gonna happen? You don't really know, and then you kind of see the same, uh, like look in all your friends' faces, kind of in this small glow now, uh, as everyone kind of blinks and adjusts back to this newfound light from uh, pure darkness. Uh, it's been quickly drops Nick's hand, and he's like, "Oh, uh, well, yes, we were all holding hands." Yeah, but you were holding extra tight. I wasn't scared. I've done. I've been locked in the closet a time or two. I mean, I have brothers. I was the youngest. That's true. Because Nyx would know first. Does your magic work consistently? Are we gonna have any hiccups with your magic, like your people's conventions? Oh no, it, it's 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 consistent. There's no wild magic here. <laughs> Although like, I wanted to take the wild magic, but no, my my magic's okay for right now. All right, good. Just, just, just had because you would know by now. So, just... <laughs> yeah, no, I'm good. <laughs> I keep a fifty foot range from you or a twenty. Foot? <laughs> you know what? I don't think either of those would matter. <laughs> um, no, we'll be okay. We should be okay. Okay. So what do we see so on you, the statue? As everything lights up, you have made it past the secret door and a few steps leading further down. Uh, you end at another small chamber down this passageway, and you see another engraved pillar there in the middle of the room, starting to kind of see the pattern here. Uh, the only different thing in this room, though, is there is a skeleton of a warrior lying on the ground south of the pillar. Uh, his clothes and belongings have long rotted away. Armor and weapons certainly rusted beyond use, but remaining is a green round shield uh, lying untouched by time near him uh, as everyone kind of looks at that at once and probably even starts to take a tentative step Ispin goes through so fast it's almost like uh, he missed his step dematerializes he's like uh, as if this were <laughs> meant for him in a way and he picks it up and he looks at it and he's like oh my goodness this is what it's about the things of legends oh man I mean 
I always thought being called Ispin the Green would be cool, but and then look at this. Uh, and he kind of like looks up at you guys, uh, and then like he realizes he's like clutching it like tight to his chest, <laughs> and like looks up at you, and he like you see a bit of like regret or in a sense of like or not like too hard of shame but softly in that direction i guess as he would kind of like lower it back down and he's like oh, there's some coins there too um look uh, this thing's got to be magical uh, this is i'm just gonna have to do first dibs as the leader on this one um <laughs> you guys understand right yeah i'm trying to understand <laughs> I would have no use for a metal shield anyway. You know, maybe I could use that, but that's mm-hmm. fine. How much is your name? Torvi. So. Come on, dude. <laughs> Come on, Torvi. Don't be like that, man. I call dibs. Oh, that's fine. You, 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 you can have dibs on that one. Because you've done that to me a few times, I remember. Yeah, that didn't count, though. Although I did call dibs, so... <laughs> Okay, and you can see like he was kind of waiting for some confirmation before wanting to like truly be like it's fine. <laughs> and he's like, oh, thank, thanks guys, thanks. Uh, look, uh, I'll make it up to you. And uh, now confidently he looks down at the uh, the pillar here, and you see some some inscriptions and such. And uh, now a little more serious, he kind of reads out, hmm, a grandmother, two mothers. And two daughters went to town together and bought one apple each. How many apples did they buy in total? Oh, is he like groans? <laughs> and uh, the north face of the pillar depicts two apples. The east face depicts three apples. And the south depicts five. And I think, let me double check. This was the one. Uh, this is the one that I don't have the handout to send, so you'll just have to use those words as in a powerful imagination. Uh, and of course, I can reiterate as necessary. Um, this is the way it reads out. A grandmother, two mothers, and two daughters went to town together and bought one apple each. How many apples did they buy in total? Essentially, it could be two, three, or five. And so, it's up to y'all. He kind of re- looks forward and he's like, ah, I'm not good at this stuff. Um, but it look, kind of looks like you got to push one of these things in. I can tell that as he like steps back. But sure enough, um, one of the, you know, each side kind of has a depiction of either two apples, three apples, or five apples. And then, yeah, let me know if I need to read it again. Can I read it one more time, please? Okay. A grandmother two mothers and two daughters went to town together and bought one apple each. How many apples did they buy in total? And then again, it's showing buttons, basically one for two, one for three apples, and then the other one for five. Can be five, wouldn't it? Pretty sure five. And it'd be, it'd be fun to have five apples. That's the way I'm looking at it. Or three times correct as well. Um, so what do y'all think? Uh, Greenbrier kind of threw something else out, I suppose, but two of you seemed in agreement. I promise I graduated college, but yeah, let's do three. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'd say three as well. What is your final answer? I'm in, the, I'm in the same boat as you. I swear I graduated college, so let's go three. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I gotta say, it is hilarious to leave it to, um, you know, we got, you know, you're playing a nice... Uh, nice last there in Nick's, but as far as actual people, one of us that is, um, you know, one of those things is the one that gets it. Because I'll admit, when I first read this, I was like, huh? And honestly, I did not get it until you just said it just now, Greenbrier. And I was like, oh, 
<laughs> and I even know the answer. But I still, whenever I read it, I was like, I was like, I don't get it. And then I'm like seeing what the answer is as I'm prepping all this and stuff. And I'm like, hmm, I'm like, whatever. <laughs> I'm like, maybe they'll figure it out. <laughs> so uh, if you already have inspiration, actually, Greenbrier, uh, but if you didn't, I'd give it to you again. Uh, and so instead, can I give pick, it to someone else? That's what I was gonna say. Uh, if you want to pick someone else in the party to throw an inspiration at, uh, feel free. I'll give it to Torval because he has the light spell. Uh, okay, he got us through the first door. My bad. Was that Torval earlier? No, I don't have the light spell. I don't. Have, I can't. I can't oh, have who had the light spell? That was uh, Blitz. Blitz. Just looks up at you like, if, is it because I'm short? You know, you just, you just can't see. That I cast the spell. I don't know everybody's voices yet. I'm sorry. Yeah, you're fine. You're fine. I'm joking about it. But yeah, Blitz cast light. I am Blitz. Here we can. Also... I guess I'll take the inspiration. Dun, dun, dun. Blitz, you are feeling inspired, and I'll just give you the uh, the little yellow dot now for saying you're the one carrying <laughs> carrying the light. Okay. Probably should have done that earlier, but ooh, and I think. I've got a torch. Should I put like an orange dot? Uh, yeah. If you're gonna be carrying the uh, light of the torch again, that's uh, that would be fine. And then I'm gonna fix your token up again real quick. To do, to do. Okay. I think it uh, something got reset there, and I want you to have all the same things. There you go. All right. Everyone should be able to see that. And yeah, I don't know. Uh, I keep the numbers hidden just for. Um, you know, immersion sake. So, like, if you you can obviously see each other's bars drop, but if you know, you know, feel free to describe it more than be like uh, exact numbers necessarily. You know, so if you're halfway, be like, yeah, I'm looking pretty bloodied up and stuff. But you don't have to be like, I'm five out of ten. Um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I usually don't like mind that too much. Like, if you do it in game, I'm not gonna like go crazy or anything. But uh, you know, it's always more fun if less. Less meta, more immersion. Always makes the game better. But anywho, uh, you guys think it's three, and I would give the rights there to, to Greenbrier. Um, as everyone like is like, five. And Ispen's like, yeah, five. <laughs> I was thinking that too. Uh, and Greenbrier's like, no, 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 no. And then you like just reach out and you touch the three. Uh, and sure enough, it's chink. And uh, another little door opens up uh, behind Ispen as he like suddenly turns around and he's like, three. Just like, ah, uh, oh, who am I kidding? I can't take credit for that. That was amazing, Greenbrier. Yeah, you, you really excelled right there. And uh, the door opens, and he's like, uh, after you? As he kind of motions for Greenbrier to take the lead, if you like. Sure, I'll take the lead. I think I might be in one of those. It revealed it, but... Some things are... Did it reveal more? Uh, it revealed to here. Okay, yeah, give me a sec. World 20s only let me do like half things right now for some reason. Okay. Silly World 20. But <laughs> uh, you do find a handful of coins there. Uh, I guess it doesn't uh, give a descript number quite yet, but we'll count all that up. And then, of course, he got what is actually just an adamantine shield but man he's certainly convinced this thing is magical me and my and yeah certainly as he follows you he's definitely like thrumming on it and being like mm -hmm, a spin green shield oh ooh, i like that yes uh it seems to be very taken upon himself and with this new shield uh and follows you down past another secret door and some stairs leading further down uh another passageway ending at yet another small chamber definitely seeing a pattern to this dungeon um but at least it's not you know uh monster after monster after monster instead it's mind teaser after mind teaser ah it couldn't be worse maybe. <laughs> uh and yet again you know, i yet still again, can't see past here uh it's, it's yeah it's reloading for me um, but Okey -dokey. just to keep you going um in this one will be another engraved pillar standing in the middle of the room um, and this one, you see that your torch and your uh, kind of ha handheld light there uh, become a little less useful as uh, there's a light being emitted from each side of the pillar, um, bright enough to like really illuminate the room. Um, so you guys kind of blink as you know you're kind of back in full light again in a sense. Um, and each light is a bit different colored as well. Uh, and in the center of the south and east walls, you see a carving of 
dragon heads, I guess, on each one. Uh, mouths open. Uh, well, no, I guess it would just be one in the center of those walls. There's a carving of a dragon head. Its mouth opened wide in a roar. So, guys, uh, do you think that's a real dragon or a fake dragon? Well, is it a carving or a painting? I'm going to try reloading mine, too. You know, dragons, you haven't seen any of those for a bit, so you know. Uh, hopefully there's not one sleeping inside. Don't dragons have a lot of loot, gold? Yeah, they also kill people for it. That's why they get more loot and gold. <laughs> <laughs> well put. Good point. That's an ever fulfilling cycle. <laughs> Well, we're not dead yet, and the traps weren't that bad, so I, I, I don't think there's something deeper that's going to kill us in five seconds. All right, I don't know what the hell's going on, but my uh, my character sheet's all screwed up again. Fun. Yeah, I have no... I, I just had to exit out of the browser and then reopen it. That's what I did earlier, and it seemed to help, and it's just like, oof, because it'll just be like, waiting, waiting, you know? And it's like, yeah. But, yeah well, I mean... um. <laughs> I made an NPC, but I uh, repurposed the sheet to something else. But for some reason, when I logged back in, now it's treating it as an NPC again. Yeah, I think it probably <clears throat> just bugged out for that first one. And maybe it would have been fine if you would have came back in or something. Um, but whatever you needed me to do, if I need to delete that first one still, I can do that or... Now I'll try loading it in again. Yeah, I'll delete the first one at least. And then, yeah, just let me know. I know it's, it's looking a little buggy, and we've been kind of pushing towards getting a new computer for the house, and things like this only make it where I'm like, okay, it's, it's time, <laughs> it's time. See, now it's fixed again. I don't get it. Oh, my bad. Yeah, I think... Um, if if this one bugs out, I would probably just reload it and hope it'll be back when you do. And if not, I mean, no worries too. Was, this isn't like, you know, this is a good tester module for us all to get used to this. These characters, hope, <laughs> technical difficulties, uh, and each other and everything, you know. Uh, hopefully, we'll be on a long, long journey together, um, starting now. So, uh, hopefully, we're setting the tone well as it's been definitely is feeling what you guys are as he whistles a merry tune and uh he's like you guys are right uh, this is great no harms happen i already got this magical shield we're probably definitely almost at the end of this i mean definitely not going <laughs> to happen at all Whew, this adventuring stuff is way easier than they said it was going to be uh and yeah you feel free to move on in because you're in yeah would be in this chamber here think of it as the, say this um the color not to offset anything for this campaign right now, but I put a D&D &D Beyond campaign link in the Discord. Mm -hmm. You guys can... I have enough spots where you guys can make one there if you want. The only downside is, I mean, I'll see your character sheet. So, up to you. But if you want to, you guys can leave it because I have enough space. That's really nice. Excellent. I appreciate that. Thank you. The sun and rain sustain the forest, but fire destroys it? Okay, and yeah, that was the last part we're getting to. I, I do have another handout I sent to you, um, as indeed uh, Greenbrier has read it out for us. And so uh, feel free to, to read it out again as you do see that on the... Uh, so the north face has the inscription reading what you just read. Beneath it is a glowing blue gem. On the east face is a yellow gem, on the south face a small red gem, and on the west face a green one. Uh, they do look like they could kind of be, you know, pushed in similarly to the uh, the last puzzle. Um, the sun and rain just sustain the forest, but fire destroys it. Uh, 
And this roaring dragon head, is it just a carving or are there colors associated with it? Um, you kind of take a peek at that closer and it does seem to be quite intimidating, especially with the mention that like, you know, dragons aren't uh, really been too much of uh, a threat and kind of this legendary thing. Um, so, you know, you definitely find yourself like a little in awe at them, but you don't, you know, it doesn't seem to be much more than to it than that. So if it's this handout, though, I guess we should use water. Hmm. Well, I think it'll be the blue one. So as you look at Each it, one of them is represented. Everyone, everyone make me an insight check and maybe I'll give you a small clue, I guess. So Let's try. Oh, shit. Oh. I need to turn the toggle on. Oh, that's fine. But dang, you're good at this. This puzzling uh, dungeon delving stuff. <laughs> Let's push all at the same time, guys. <laughs> Blitz lets out a little bunny toot. All three guys. Uh, so it Trial looks, and error. Uh, I'll say really just Greenbrier, kind of looking at it. You get the sense, um, and Torvald with the six, yeah. Uh, so yeah, I mean, this is just a, a quick insight, but for a quick clue, Greenbrier, man, you're leading the party on these puzzles. As you can see that instead of being just one for an answer, it seems like pressing them in a sort of order would probably be the way to do it. Although you get a hint that if you mess it up, it might be a little more dastardly on this one. Okay. Um, how about yellow, blue, green, red? Just following the couple of the color representations in the yeah. uh, quote. Okay, so the sun and rain sustain the forest, but fire destroys it. And so you kind of think that in your mind again um, as you take charge once more. Uh, as Ispin is like, "Wow, look at her go!" He like as you guys shuffle into the room, he like holds his his arms back like way unnecessarily on like Nix and Blitz, and he's like, oh, "Look, guys." I think she's got it. As you're like, doot, deep, boop, like Simon says, or something, doot, deep, boop, deep. Oh, wow. And uh, sure enough, <laughs> uh, once again, another door slides open. Uh, you guys are on a roll and making it through here uh, quite efficiently as another door slides open. And you can continue awesome. to make your way through as you see fit. This one starts to wind back a little. Listen, hurry up. Oh, pardon me, pardon me. Uh, is it for me to take charge once more? Uh, I, you're right, I do have the you're shield. Mind. Oh. You're kind of in the dark now. Our fearless leader I should take have a tiny little hand waiting for you. Oh, if y'all got... Where are you guys all the way down the passage? Uh, sort of. Uh, it must be lagging for me again. It's that, it hadn't showed that y'all moved. This road 20, why do you do these things? Mario, is that you? Hmm, guess I'll just have to refresh after every encounter. That's not the worst thing. Alright, I'm coming back in. But uh, you guys start to make your way through a long spiraling tunnel which will descend 
into a large cavern with high ceilings. And I'm coming back. Here I am. There we go. Okay, so more is revealed in the darkness as you all kind of shuffle along. Uh, it's been definitely there with you the whole time, although for some reason every once in a while he just gets this real blank look in his eyes and you're all like, what's with this guy? <laughs> it feels like you're just circling life down the train. What am smoking that shit. They don't call me the green for nothing. Do you see any markings on the wall at all? Uh, you, not necessarily. Um, really just pretty nondescript. Tunnel walls, uh, these rough stone and packed dirt floors, pretty dark, pretty silent, and that damp earth smell is very, very much prevalent. Eerily Honestly, so. we should have busted a hole through the wall and gone straight in. You know, I thought of that, but the cost of uh, of the getting the gnome's help was a little too much. Oops. Next time you see more. That wasn't right. Boop. I saw my life flash before my eyes. No, you didn't. <laughs> You're definitely looking for traps now. Hey, no traps. All right. So you guys press along and. you see a large cavern start to open up in front of you with high ceilings uh, and you automatically start to make out like a bit of a pond of water uh, and really just like uh, this odor very pungent starts to assail you as uh, I guess I should probably move I would say that's gross if you guys want to put yourselves just here in the front of the chamber and Guys, I'm down Windy Beast, so don't fart. Yeah, they're, you're starting to wonder, too, as it starts to be real nasty. And if you guys want to scoot up that last little bit, and then I'll, we will proceed. So, Torval, you shuffle into this chamber with your starting to be good friends uh, at your heels. Uh, we'll put this in there. Actually, he's not fearless. He'll be up in the mix of it. He's trying to get up in the head. Uh, and so as soon as you come into this chamber, you see that you're definitely not alone. You step into the view of the cavern and are assaulted by several small copper-skinned dragon folk. Uh, and yeah, I guess just uh, caution, you know, is always okay. Yeah. Um, you did actually ask there right when it was just a little too late. There was a couple of parts on the map where there were peepholes. Uh, this is just behind the DM screen because it's a little too late now or whatever. But uh, you you could have made – let me double read it. But I think uh, prevented surprise. Yeah, they'll, they'll get a surprise round on you guys as we will roll initiative. So I've already pre-rolled in there. I did actually roll super fucking high with those guys. But uh, you, you – in character, you might not recognize these guys. Uh, or you might, just depending on your doings or what you've heard and stuff. But uh, these are most certainly kobolds. Uh, waiting to ambush you here as they've been spying on you through some little peepholes at a couple uh, I guess it wouldn't hurt now to to reveal it and there was a if you would have asked earlier even in that same tunnel if you would have asked earlier I would have let you let you roll for it you know because they would have been peeping on you right then but you really didn't um, so that's just the way it goes it never hurts to ask uh, I suppose but you never want to bog the game down either so you got to pick your moments but this time you guys you guys didn't but it doesn't matter that much but just so you reveal it. See, there's a little hidden tunnel in the bottom. Those sneaky snakes, they had seen you from the beginning. I'm going to have to redo my character sheet because it did it again. So maybe just try refreshing or, or exiting out of the browser and logging in. And then it might, hopefully it'll be back to normal. All right. That, it, it, like, it keeps well, reverting to what it was before I changed it to Greenbrier. Weird. That is weird. But I'll, I'll, that is I'll try weird. it real quick. That's what I've been having to do too. So it, it might definitely just be just be that. Uh, shoot. Um, 
whenever you make it back in, go ahead and roll me a d20, and I guess we'll do a tie-off. We'll just do it that way. And I got a 9, so you'll probably win. Mr. Ispin is in the mix. He is actually uh, uh, has a stat block and stuff, too. He'll be helping out. Uh, and, yep. Yeah, I'd already balanced this, and then that last-minute dude joining, I thought I was going to have to change it up slightly. I was thinking ahead, and then, nope, we're good. So just roll initiative again, or roll a d20? Uh, just roll a d20. We'll just do a tie-off, and I'll, we'll set it up. All right, so we'll keep it as is. As, uh, you know, it would be, let me check, I, I believe... Um, in only the light you're carrying, so otherwise it's pitch black in here. Blitz, you you have a little light in one hand, green briar, one hand's taken up with the torch at the moment. Um, I think that's like 20 feet off of you for the torch, or is it 10? I think so. I can find out here real quick. And then for Blitz, uh, how much is the light? Yeah, 20 feet. 20 foot radius, for 20. additional 20 for dim. So pretty much every, the whole chamber from the torch will have dim light, and then you know we'll play it. We'll play it as we go. Uh, but for now, Greenbrier, yeah, you you do have a torch in one hand, but you see these kind of scaly-looking uh, little uh, humanoids. Some of them a little girthier than others, uh, but you know all the same type of creature. Uh, they're kind of copper-colored. These little kobolds, and they come out, and they you just hear them shout, uh, "For the capricious enigma!" You have trod in the wrong place! And then definitely just blah, 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 like weird kind of draconic words and such as, yeah, you feel free to start us off. See you guys, cult. Every freaking religion, cult. Um, well, if I want to use my short bow, I have to do something with the torch. Uh, is there a place that I can wedge it in the wall or is it all stone? Uh, it is all stone, so I mean, I guess the simple thing would be to just drop it at your feet, but that wouldn't fill like the whole chamber necessarily. But I mean, if you want both your hands, I guess it's probably. Can I try and hand it to Nix? Here, hold this. Because Nix is a sorcerer, right? He only needs one hand to hold his spell focus. So he yep. he would still need to do semantics for some spells, probably, but. Uh, yeah, you know, being a level one, yeah, right now it's all just my focus. I'll hold the light. Yeah, I'll hold the light spell. Go kill him. Alright, I I guess I'll just drop the torch then. Okay, and then uh, just one more time, what was the range for light? Was it the same as the torch? Um, let me deal with, I don't remember his torch, but for light, it is 20 foot dim, okay. sorry, 20 foot bright, 20 foot dim. Nice, so same thing. Okay, all right, so, uh, so you just kind of don't even worry about the torch. You throw it down, knowing that Blitz kind of like, call, you know, you see he seems pretty confident about the light, and what would you like to do? All right, I'm going to attempt to hit this guy with my short bow. Okay, so you crouch down, kind of aiming uh, between Ispin there. And he's like, oh, my skeevies! <laughs> I gotta turn the automatic thing off again. And you're shooting for the, just, the, hit. just the closest one there. Uh, 16 will definitely hit him. And you do 8 damage. Actually, uh, you stab this arrow into his chest. Uh, blood starts to run down as he cries out in Draconic. So if you, uh, you said you did, but if, if anybody else... I do know Draconic. If you do know Draconic, anyone else, he definitely cries out, uh, like, uh, uh, don't feel bad if it's for the capricious enigma, and he just falls down dead. <laughs> My death is not in vain. Some some pathetic thing like that. But uh, awesome shot. Dead eye right there, for sure. And then you're a little snug, uh, but anything else you want to do? Bonus action or anything? Uh... I don't even think she has bonus actions right now. No, she's got two weapon fighting, but that type, she doesn't have that. Um, I guess she can try and back up, because the Kender is small, right? 
so it doesn't cost extra movement. Uh, I think it, uh, I'd have to see that in writing. I know we were doing something the other day for, um, yawn, or for the, uh, Tales from the Yawning Portal adventure, but that was cause we were in 10 feet as well. And I was just like, yo, we need something to work through this. Uh, so I'm not a hundred percent. I think it would still cost you. Cause I know there's a halfling ability that allows you to move through people freely with no consolation. So I would think unless you have that, then you still would have the consolation. Okay, well, either way, 10 feet of movement or 5, doesn't matter. Okay. Uh, that'll be end of turn. All right, awesome. Great way to start off the fight is Ispin looks back and he's like, oh, the puzzles and then this? Uh, wow. And he seems uh, like he's got to know you. Uh, and this dude runs up here, and we will see what Torval can do. Uh, let me find my step block. Alright. So he'll run up on there. And I guess just to mix it up, uh yep, you said you wanted to share the share the front line. I guess what will be will be. <laughs> um and we'll just see how they roll out in the end. I'm not gonna be too savage or anything, but I do get some pack tactics. Uh so don't don't hate me for debt. But it looks like uh they're going to try to hit you guys with some daggers. We'll take two towards Torval. So here's one with pack tactics and another one. So I believe a 13 will miss as you feel one dagger come towards you and you easily fend it off. And you're starting to even think to yourself again, like this adventuring thing is easy. They were right. As you <laughs> feel another dagger go betwixt your ribs and you're like, Oh, <laughs> Oh God. No, uh, it's not as easy as they said. Uh, <laughs> holy hell, especially when you roll damage like that. Uh, you will take six uh, piercing damage as he sticks the rib in between your armor, uh, in betwixt your ribs even, and you feel that that soft, uh, or not soft, but that cold stab of the of like the pinpoint of that dagger and the, the heat start to rush. You know, blood starting to pull up a little underneath your, your armor there. And... Uh, that was two of them, and so we'll see how your friend Blitz fares as one tries to jab a dagger at him, and looks like a 14, no, a 15, I'm sorry. We'll hit with the first one. Oh, I'm no, sorry, I, wait, hold miss. on, I, I rolled that wrong, I, re, I looked at that wrong, my bad. So, the first attack with him missed, the second attack would have been a, an 18 against uh, Torval, sorry, I'm just making sure I was doing that right. And yeah, then yeah. Against oh, Blitz, Torval, okay. the first one would only be a 14. That was right. That'll miss. Okay. And then he will try to do it again. Uh, or his friend will, at least. And that's only a 10. So you kind of jump in, uh, ducking, diving, dodging. Um, what do you have to... Uh, what is... You, are you wearing armor? Yeah, I have um, the scale mail and a shield. Oh, okay, sweet. All right. I was like, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. So you're definitely using those. You know, you're kind of padding and jumping and kind of uh, using your your thick pads of your feet off the walls to kind of give you that extra like duck and dodge. But you certainly feel uh, your your armor deflect one of the blows, uh, and the other one just kind of clacks harmlessly against your shield as you're maneuvering. And then I guess as uh, you know, he will step back. Actually, hold on. Let me read this specifically and see if I really can do that. Oh, never mind. Uh, this dude will stay back here, and he just has a little sling. He actually will take a step. Uh, yeah, and he'll just try to shoot Blitz with the sling. That's it. So just a little sling. The pack tactics does actually work still, since there's an enemy near. That's what I was checking. Uh, so a dirty 21 is looking like. So you will. It looks like one sling gets through. You're kind of, you know, dodging around all these blows in the forefront, you know, and you're thinking like, yes, I finally get to test this out. I knew I could do this, uh, and you're just like, you're not really focusing on the background as much as like a little pebble shot across and dink, it just kind of hits you in the side of the head, uh, gives you a bit of a headache. You hate when that happens. It's so much harder to think through your work. As I can roll some damage dice tonight, I guess. Another six. I'm all right, right guys. Let's see how it is. And People are fighting. 
Oh, let me change this. So that way this works correctly. Alright, and then we'll be on to Tor Vol. Alrighty, I am going to take a swing at the one that stabbed me successfully. Okay, little guy. The little guy. And he looks awfully little. This is like he's just old enough to hold the dagger. But he looks at you wickedly like, yeah, this ha mama! And the other one's like, good job, son. I'm going to murder these people. And yeah, you're going to put that to an end. As you strike forward, uh, you'll see some damage. And yeah, this is, I, I rolled out all their HP because I'm like, you know, in a lot of games I have to run for AL, I just have to maximize HP at every step I go, which is sometimes not fun. But with the, what I like to do when I approach encounters is just roll them out and see, you know, you might have your big guys, you might have your small guys. And then I thought it'd be kind of funny to like size these guys up appropriately. But anyway, this dude had one HP only. Now you just oh, roll, I'll, yeah, I actually, they, I think I rolled a zero technically, but I was like, well, they have to have one at least. So anyway, that was like just a baby, and you just go bink, and it like this thick black bruise appears on its head, uh, as a you know the gaping wound, and it falls down, uh, slightly into the pool of water, and seems to like sizzle up slightly uh, as it hits the water. And this one looks down and cries out in draconic, "No, my firstborn child!" But Torval, if you don't understand that, it means nothing to you. Nope, <laughs> I don't speak kobold. <laughs> And it's been over here. It's like, yes, that is the way. Good job, Torvald. Here, let me just get in here. And he like squeezes himself into this tiny spot, which unfortunately, unfortunately, does kind of throw him off of his game a little. Uh, he swears he knows what he's doing, but as he kind of squeezes in, actually, you know, what? I think it'd be more fun for him to uh, to help you guys instead. As he like tries to squeeze in, and he's like, ah, ah, ah. you know what? <sighs> It's like they say, I can't always be the star of the show. You, Blitz, this is your moment, as uh, he gives you the help action. And then awesome. it actually is your turn. Yeah. All right, so. Oh, wait, hold on. I'm so sorry. My bad. He, that's a bonus action. Next. So he will he will oh. do that. But then he's like, ah, oh, you know what? Screw it. I'm going for it. It's my moment, too. As he'll take a disadvantage stab at this kobold uh, for... 13 which will hit it wow sorry to de detract from your turn uh, he only does four kind of starts to bloody up this kobold a little bit as he like wedges back into his spot and he's like turns back towards Nyx and Greenbrier and he's like yeah that was quite impressive right uh, and then uh, of course Blitz he kind of amped you up man he set the stage for you all right. Um, I don't have the benefits to do what I want to do, so just pulling out the dagger, I'm going to stab at this guy. Yeah, let's see here. <laughs> Woo! Welcome to Dragonlance! <laughs> stab at me. Right up right under the, under the draw. And twist. And as you retract your blade back, of course, he's like, blah, 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 his blood just starts to mangle up in his mouth and pour profusely down his front. Uh, he's definitely bloodied, but it is a bigger one. All right. All right, guys. <laughs> Let's live. Um, I don't have... Yeah, that's it. That's, that's for my turn. Okay. So you guys are off to a good start course this level one stuff is treacherous but i know you guys can do it especially with the help of your lunar sorceress nix nix sailor moon nix <laughs> sailor moon okay hello what i am going to do is i am going to firebolt um my firebolt i'm gonna firebolt it's 120 can to this one right here so boom there's an 11 hit. Uh, it is just a little shy as he sees your fire kind of blossom next to him and uh, he just sidesteps a little bit and he's like, for my child! Yeah, and Draconic, of course. <laughs> um, and that's going to end my turn. I don't have anything else, so yeah, so end my turn. Okay. 
Uh, and we're back at the top with Greenbrier. All right, Greenbrier's going to take a step forward. Can she see this guy here? You sure can. All right, she's going to hit it with her short bow. Oh, and you feel like it's, it's tough. Like it's... it's tough shooting, shooting in between uh, all your friends and such, but you like just barely scrap and lock on to, uh, to this foe right here. And you hit him with your short bow strike for five piercing. Five piercing. And as he's kind of clutching at uh, at the blood just raining down from his uh, his throat there, uh, he doesn't even see it coming. As <laughs> you go like through both of his hands in his throat again, so he's just clutching. He's like, oh, as he falls over, his hands are forever laced upon his throat, uh, and he's dead. All right. And Great Briar will back up again, and that'll be end of turn. All right, chipping them away, but of course uh, they will try again. Uh, looks like uh, I think always strength in numbers, and uh, I, I'll do it like this first. One kobold will strike. Towards Blitz, uh, no pack tactics. We're looking at a 13 to hit, which will not. You easily kind of sidestep that. And then I guess, uh, shoot. I guess I wouldn't do that. Uh, so this one will attack Torval just recklessly, no regard for itself. Uh, and an 11 just harmlessly you know, lashes up. It's almost pathetic. It's like sobbing. It's like, you took my baby. It's just like kind of claw you up like this. this thing you're like, you don't know if you want to throw an oh, arm over the shoulder and console or really just, you know, put her, put, put him out of his misery. But either way, it's a pretty feeble attempt. And then on the other side, I guess this is my only shot. Really? I was trying to think of something dastardly, but uh, in the end, uh, play it how they would. Uh, but I will get one attempt for pack tactics as this little guy is in the back and he's looking forward at blitz it's a hard target to hit but he's got another little stone and this one's only actually going to be a 10 to hit so uh you know the pelt just kind of hits you and ricochets like off in little tiny pieces just uh, like crumbles and then you withstood the round and torval all right <laughs> I'm going to check something out real quick. I am going to attack the one right next to me here. That guy. All right. All righty. Oh. Very good. And I need to check. Ah, I didn't add that, so didn't matter for the last one, but I will add it this time. I have the Duel of Skill, which means I get to add plus two to my damage. Nice. So, and I hadn't done that. So, now, there we go. Okay, cool. Definitely want to get that in for taking that uh, fighting style. And with the Yeah, team, I totally forgot about that. <laughs> oh, gotta have it. Gotta have it. And uh, feel free to uh, take the reins on this one as you cleave another one asunder. Oh, guys, we only got two left. We can do this. Okay, so you merrily call that back to the band. Uh, you know, at first a little wavering, but at this point full of uh, bravado and confidence as you, with a jerk, extricate your blade. Uh, and, of course, Ispin's back here. And, uh, you know, Blitz is next. So I think he he likes that. He senses your tense about ready to spring. Um, all of a sudden you feel a more comforting hand upon your back there. Blitz is, he's like... You got this, little guy. You're doing great. Uh, hey, hey, no, no, no. I am guy. I am man. I am not little. I meant that as a term of Big endearment, brain. buddy. Uh, but I'm sorry. I I appreciate that. Uh, you know, I won't I won't cross that line with you because I respect you, Blitz. Go out there and get them. They're not gonna touch you. As uh, he looks a little like abashed, but still, nonetheless, it gives you the help action. <laughs> I can call him little. I, uh, I just, that make, guy behind I just you want to pick you What's up. You call him little. How do you pick me up? Um, stand. It's a... <laughs> Sorry. Uh, my bad. Your toe is just you so cute. Well, y'all laugh like this is real life problems for me. <laughs> oh, someone's getting tickled. 
just grumbling. It's like, ah. Uh, but I'm gonna st I'm gonna try to stab this guy. Let's see here. Uh, oh wait, I'm gonna. Uh, he'll actually drop it real quick though. My bad. He'll drop his sword, pull out a little bow, take it a quick shot. Uh, and it looks like he will hit. He will. He'll go for the dude off in the distance. We'll just do it like that, so he's not taking your your shot or anything. Uh, which I think this will probably be a kill. Actually, I'll just have him throw the dagger. That would be cooler. He already had it in hand and everything. He just throws the dagger across the room. So six damage to this little guy. Sticks him in his chest dead. And Ispen is like, Yes! Yes! This will go down in the epic I'm writing for sure! And of course, the ones you guys killed too. I mean, but I got one! Yes! And he seems like beside himself. Uh, and then of course, he's again, I mean, not only is he helping you, but he's like hopefully pumping you up too after the you know the friction this is why we're here you know we got to get to know each other <laughs> power of anger to stab this kobold in the chest oh it's been and this one had exactly five hp so feel free to give that any gusto uh you prefer it's like call him me flipping small I, i'll say this in dwarvers call me a flipping small just stabbing this guy ah <sighs> All right, let's go. Looking at looking up at you, buddy. Oh yes, yes. Uh, and again, my apologies. I just you know I I don't know really the the demeanor of your folk yet. Uh, lesson learned. You know I don't ever often put my foot in my mouth. I guess I'll have to admit it this one time. Ugh, ugh. You're getting the sense that that's probably not the truth. <laughs> but uh, with this ambush dealt with, uh, you guys can kind of take a, a little peek around the room, uh, and you do see that in the center of this sanctum is uh, definitely this pond with kind of a pungent odor to it. Uh, it kind of starts to make your eyes water as you blitz and Greenbrier, you in Torval, you know, you've been there. Um, you guys kind of enter the room proper. Ispen comes in and he's like, my god it like puts a little kerchief over his neck he's like this is foul uh and doesn't seem like it'd be very fun to wade in necessarily either uh and yet from standing there at the little shore of it you could see that the north face of the pillar has an inscription that reads to acquire great wealth you must be willing to make a great sacrifice Underneath the inscription is the engraved image of a dragon flying over a hoard of gold. And at this point, Ispen's like, Gold? Look, I told you, we're almost upon it. And he almost seems to be salivating as uh, he feels the end is nigh. And yet, there must still be some sort of secret here. And he's like, to make a great sacrifice. Hmm. You know, I'm just not getting that one at all. Weird. And uh, I'll pop another little handout in the Discord. That's a gold coin into the water. Um, it hits the bottom and looks pretty unassuming. Yeah, but that might work. Um, sacrifice. Well, usually when someone talks about sacrifice, in my experience, that means blood. Right? Wrong? Well, I'm already bleeding, so I'm gonna, like, stick my, rub my finger across yeah. that. Okay. that mark. <laughs> the cute Just little, uh... The cute little Nyx is like, there must be blood. A, a, a sacrifice. <laughs> we do this in the night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, so Blitz, you're going to take some blood. You know, you kind of map from yourself a little bit. And uh, what would you do there? I'm going to go touch the, uh, the pillar. Okay, so as you wade into the pond, uh, go ahead and make me a constitution saving throw. Great guys. Before you jumped in there, I healed you for eight oh, HP. Oh, cool. 
Well, that is very helpful as uh, you feel what you realize is most certainly, um, you know, a dull acid here. Not enough to, you know, eat through the stone, of course, but certainly enough to sting some flesh. And as you're going through, uh, it hurts. And with the seven, you do take the full brunt of it uh, and you feel yourself feeling happier because it would have just killed you. Not like outright, but you would have knocked you down. Uh, but since Greenbrier had been like, hold hold on, and made sure to to bless you there with her healing before you oh, go very in. Very clutch move. Very clutch move. As you go in, and it stings, it burns, and you go up and you go to wipe your blood on it, and it you it really doesn't seem as if it's the blood, but as soon as your finger, for your fuzzy little cute finger that is also manly and badass, slides over the uh, <laughs> image of the hoard of gold. Uh, a door slides open and you kind of win says you know you did what it has to take uh, wading through and taking that that acid damage was the the sacrifice you made and it was not in vain snaps snaps all the way around this is why I hate freaking temples <laughs> I'm gonna heal myself <laughs> little daughter going crazy alright so you heal up and you guys are free to move into the horde room. This chamber is lit by thin rays of light filtering in from above. It's so beautiful. Fresh air brushes against your face, carrying with it the faint scent of ancient stone and treasure. The cavern stretches before you, its rough walls shimmering with traces of precious gemstones embedded within. Beneath your feet, the floor is littered with a layer of glittering coins. The coins glimmer in the dim light, reflecting hues of gold, silver, bronze, captivating your eye with the sheer brilliance of it all. This Wait, 40... Nyx, don't touch it. Don't touch it. I know you want to, but don't. Yeah, I, I'm creepy. Like, I'm like, Someone slowly Nyx. Someone tackle Nyx. I can't do it because I'm feeling <laughs> Someone tackle Nyx. You guys come in nervously, <laughs> and you're all looking at Nyx as you know the kinder way, and her eyes gleam as, as bright as that gold uh, until you notice it's been cracking the room, and he hoots in victory. Ooh, this is it! We did it! We did it! Go ahead, gather what you want first, and I'll go next. He sees like some nerves, and he comes up and he grabs a coin and holds it up and like kind of puts a chomp in his mouth and stuff and turns back to, and he's like, "This is genuine." He puts that one in his pocket and he turns back and he says, "Look, look! You let me have the shield. It would only be a wise and benevolent thing for a leader such as Ispin Green Shield to do, uh, to let." My comrades go first. Feel free. Take as much as you will, and then when you're done, I'll take what I want to. We're rich! Woo! We're not gonna be able to even carry all this out of here. Stop at it! How, how big is this one? Like, he's, a like regular, what's this he's a pretty scrawny, medium sized dude. Alright, well, uh, what's your face? Uh, Nix is gonna jump and tackle him into the gold. Just like celebratory, just friendly celebratory, like screaming, throwing the coins around type thing. He's like, more cool yeah, and then uh, He pulls himself <laughs> up and the co- the coins kind of rain down upon you both. And he laughs. He's like, oh, Nix, it was you. <laughs> and he like grabs up a great big handful of them and like throws them up to the ceiling and they rain down. He like covers his head and he's like, oh, that was not as good of an idea as I imagined it to be. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm spitting it out of my mouth like like in a pool like a kid does with water. I'm just spitting coins out of my mouth. <laughs> and yeah, oh, yeah, so you guys have about a round, you know, he's he's giving you guys like a round or, you know, your your time to fill your pockets before he starts doing the same. He kind of stands up and he's like, well, are we doing this? Come on, let's get it. Yeah, I'm going let's all go. in. I'm going to Okay. even have I cautiously enjoy myself. <laughs> of course, you guys, as players, y'all are a little nervous. Um, <laughs> but as characters, shoot, y'all don't know any better. Oh, it's it's Dyer, it's you might be a little more hesitant just being someone who doesn't even maybe care as much about world, worldly golds. And you're thinking, like, this could be somebody. You might be dot, dot, dot. Kind of like, eh. But you still, yeah, you're thinking, well, maybe there'd be something for me. You start to peek around. You can't help it. You can't help it. Right. I'm doing a perception check because you know what? Just because. Can I do that? I should uh, ask first. I think just. Um, yeah, yeah, sure. If you want to. Of course. And Greenbrier. I'm doing a perception Briar, check too. So, I'll see anything. Okay. 
you guys start to look around. You're not really noticing much. You start to pocket the coins. You're definitely cautious. Greenbrier, you, you're more hesitant. You think something must be afoot here. Uh, and yet you thought, well, maybe not. We vanquished the kobolds. They talked about this capricious enigma that must have been their their dragon lord. Uh, who knows? They, maybe we're we're good. Uh, and uh, of course, you know, there's always going to be some plot armors. But you start to pocket your yourselves in your bags anywhere you can fit with this gold. Everything's awesome. You know, there's definitely this like short few seconds where the tension goes. It seems like yeah, you know, especially after this bloody fight where uh, you know. Even if you get healed, you still took those hits, and it hurt, you know? That could be a little, especially for your first real good outing and stuff. It's like, oh, shoot, you know? Like, that actually hurt. I didn't, you know, I didn't think it would hurt like that. Uh, but uh, it's still, you know, you're, like, rolling in it. Everyone's just having a good old time. But, of course, uh, we all know, it does, you know, there's going to be some Indiana Jones-like behavior here as you start, <laughs> you start to gather up the treasure. Everyone's starting to cackle and have a good time, and... The seconds seem to tick by like minutes as it's like, woo, it was truly having fun. Uh, and all of a sudden, though, you hear this like, mm-hmm, kind of rumbling uh, off in the distance. I would say, especially Greenbrier, you already had a, you know, a curved ear kind of already out listening. Uh, and yet, so you probably might hear it first as you like suddenly drop the gold in your hands with like a tinkle and everyone looks towards you and you're like, uh oh. As all of a sudden, uh, the, the rumble grows loud enough to everyone to, for everyone to hear, and it also starts shaking everything so strongly uh, that you have to like almost hold yourselves from falling to the ground. Chunks of the stone begin to fall from above you. The this temple is are certainly amazing, collapsing in on itself. Uh, the secret door, even that you guys came in over here, uh, Blitz starts to take like a step towards it, and you see it starting to slowly close in front of you. Get it's out. been runs past and like nearly pushes blitz out of the way he's like run run for your lives every man in here for themselves <laughs> all right <good. laughs> okay I'm holding like a shield upside down with all the gold coins in it just running so this will work as a certain uh scene and we can definitely scoot ourselves out of the map thematically as we go but it really uh you did not find a longbow but as you go uh Greenbrier, you are the like the last to step out of the chamber, and as you do, your foot kicks this little what you think is like a pebble or something, uh, and it looks like kind of like a little pearl, um, and you just don't know what you're thinking really, but just hesitation tells you to grab it, you know. We're not gonna make it. And you no. also noticed that Ispen, uh, he had kind of a strange bulge in one of his pockets right there, right whenever right he started kind of scooping things up as he was running. Uh, and so, you know, you know, you got some stuff there, perhaps, but you all run for it to get as far as you can. And uh, plundering the capricious Enigma's horde has triggered this collapse. Uh, you have to get out of here as safely as you can. Uh, and pressure's on, technically... Uh, it's funny because it's like you only have 30 minutes to run this section but we still have like 50 minutes of scheduled time but we're on our extra hour guys so pressure oh, we're, you're gonna, it's gonna collapse uh, and, I'm not gonna make it guys in any case you're gonna need to make it through some obstacles in your path by making group checks uh, to reach safety without accumulating uh, too much failures in that sense of course, feel free to use any of your own resources or ingenuity uh, to help you along the way. And as you guys start to take off, uh, terrified, uh, being chased, it seems, by this low rumble resonating through the stone with an ominous intensity, dust dancing in the flickering torchlight uh, as hairline cracks snake their way along the walls, or I guess, uh, you know, hand light, if you will. But hairline cracks snaking their way along the walls like ancient veins pulsating with impending doom. The very foundation upon which the subterranean maze was built begins to tremble, weakened by the weight of time and the erosion of its structural integrity. Uh, You know, that definitely means time to get up on out of here. And as you do, how about uh, Torval, why don't you roll me a D5? I know that's a random one. I think you might be able to pull it out on the side, or you could just type slash R1D5. Pull it out that way. Mm 
Right there, Torval. Torval, last chance if you're there. Roll me a D D five. No. Okay. How about a uh, Nix? If you'll roll me a D five, you can do slash R one D five. And I'm gonna need him in a second. So hopefully. Six slash R five. Uh, all right, slash R one D five. Just type it out, just like that, right? Just uh, slash R one D five. Yep. Just like you've been okay. doing. doing yeah. Rows, yeah. Um, and it said unrecognizable to command. Well, slash R space one D five. Oh. Slash R space. Five, bro. Oh, dang, it, dang it, DM for this okay. random dice roll. Okay, uh, so as you guys are rushing through the tunnel, you start to see jets of water spring forth from those cracks in the walls. It starts to fill this passage with rushing water. Not going to quite drown you, but definitely could trip you up a little bit as you're all rushing out of here. And so each and every one, and shoot, I'll even roll one for Ispen as he's part of the group too. Uh, we all need to make some athletics checks. Uh, let's hope he's got oh, a yeah, modifier. No, yes. Uh, negative one. Yeah! Uh, may the dice gods be with me. No! <laughs> Ispin like, gets uh, like, blasted in the face by some rushing water, and he's like, whoa, 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 whoa. And he's, oh, God! And he starts to slip up and trip up and such. Uh, looks like Greenbrier, you, you start slipping around and doing the same and kind of having to brace yourself on the walls. It definitely slows you up. Uh, kind of... Who's the little one now? <laughs> 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 I need to grab your fuzzy hand. Uh, Torval, same. You, you just you get hit by this rushing water through the tunnel, starting to fill it up, and everyone makes it through. You can keep proceeding down the tunnel some more. Uh, but of course, I think that is going to be a general fail with one, two, three fails and one, uh, one success only. So four fails and one success. As you all get kind of choked up by the water, and you definitely feel it uh, delaying you. Um. Oh, I guess I should have done something there. That's my fault. But uh, and you got to keep on going, though. Of course, it's been like, no, oh, wait up, wait up, go, Nix, go. We gotta make it through this. As you continue on, and then uh, I did get one there from you, Torval. So if uh, if you want Torval, roll me a D four now, please, sir. Um, okay. As you guys rush through the water and throughout the uh, further into the chamber. Uh, or out, you know, through the tunnel and getting out of here. And all of a sudden, uh, you hear these, like, coming from overhead. And you look up and you're like, oh, no. As you start to see some of the rock itself start to break free from the uh, roof ahead of you. Uh, and you can dodge most of the large stones and debris. But, of course, uh, it does seem like having to pick apart and take pauses here and stuff like that might hurt you and while Ispin is rolling up here in the back uh, he reaches forward and he will put his shield over Nyx and so he won't roll this time but he puts his shield over Nyx and he's like come on we can make it through this and I'll need everyone to make uh... actually so as a group I need you to decide what skill you want to use with an explanation of course and then everyone will use that skill Except for Nyx, he'll take advantage as he's kind of blocking you with the shield. Perception check to dodge the rocks coming at our faces. So you got to vote for perception. Anybody else not good at that or better at something else or however you guys want to do it? I've got a plus three for perception, but I mean, I've got a plus five for survival. What, what does everybody have for performance? Oh, never mind. That was weird. Uh, yeah. All right. Yeah, I'm I'm positive in each one, so I'm good. So perception. Yeah. Okay. I guess that sounds like a group group you know Look majority out. decision for a perception to dodge the rocks coming down. Makes sense to me. 
If everyone will roll that out. And then right, Nix, uh, you rolled twice, so good job there. And both of them were pretty good. So we got a 13, a 16, a 21, a 15. Nice. So, you know, the athletics, maybe not y'all's bag as much, but the uh, the perception, very keen eyes you have. Uh, and especially it's been kind of helping you there. Uh, Nix, you feel like it was almost a little unnecessary at times, but... Uh, you still feel a little, uh, you know, the thought that counts. It's still a little comforted by his uh, gesture, at least. If, if if you said perception, like, we, they can see the rocks, did everybody just do the Matrix? Pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's keep it on rolling. Uh, Greenbrier, we'll go with you next, and then uh, Blitz, you'll get a shot at it, too, of course. Um, save the best for last, perhaps. But Greenbrier, as you guys are making it through, and, you know, you, you guys are heftily making it through. So, you know, feel free to move yourselves like a hefty jump through the chamber if you like. And, you know, in the end, you know, you'll be at the end when you're there, I suppose. But if we're keeping it up with uh, just some, some looks, you know, you guys are probably about two-thirds of the way through right now, you could say. But in any case, I will still need a D3 roll from Greenbrier, please. All right. Nothing but ones. Every single one's been a one. So we're doing this in exactly the order it's written, it looks like. Uh, and t talking about the exact order, damn, that starts to get confusing. As you're making your way through these tunnels and starting to hit some chambers and things, and, you know, then this, like, door over here cracks open, and you see that there was a secret tunnel the whole time, those dastardly kobolds. Uh, it starts to get very confusing. Uh, you start to lose sight of each other in the haze and the dust and all. Um, even as you start to shout out to one another, uh, it's, you still can't even quite hear each other as you're separated by all these loud, thunderous cracks and booms as this place is literally falling apart on top of you. Uh, and that being said, you will need to find your way back to each other using teamwork and some clear strategies. Uh, I will need either an intelligence or wisdom check. Uh, not any skill, but either intelligence or wisdom, and it is y'all's... Y'all's choice. Oh, well, it's the easy pick for me. My choice would be wisdom, because intelligence would not be so good. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a plus one in either one, so it doesn't matter to me. Uh, so y'all have to make a group decision on which one you're going to do, and then roll. We as a group have to pick one of the two to do, not we each individually pick. Oh, yeah, I want intelligence, guys. <laughs> I figured. <laughs> so we have a vote for intelligence, a vote for wisdom, and then one person said, does it matter? Hey, I'm neutral. I'm, I'm plus one on either one, so it doesn't matter to me. So Green Greenbrier, you got a tie? I'd rather do wisdom. Okay. Intelligent isn't okay. as good for me. All right, so let's do That's some fine. new we'll set of wisdom. rolls. Or rolls. I'm at my bad. So if you'll roll again, will everyone do a wisdom check? Just raw wisdom. Uh, Nix is looking good. Torval a little under. Uh, looks like uh, Ispen is, which he does need to catch up, but he is doing amazing. All right. Yeah. Okay, so I think only two down and what? Four, three up? <clears throat> okay, so yeah, it, it is. It's a hazy mess in here. And especially Torval and Blitz, you find yourselves like completely lost. Like if it weren't for, uh, for Nyx and Ispen coming back and kind of steering you a little further up, uh, which I think uh, I would need a roll from Greenbrier still, because the for the first one wouldn't we weren't quite doing it yet. Oh, so you want another one? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Which I think you're fine either way, but just you know, just to pitch in, see what you got, uh, and you're still good. Uh, so it's one, two, three successes, but with the higher being Nix and uh, Ispen, like at one point uh, Nix Ispen like comes up. And uh, you like you're starting to like panic. You feel like you're lost. And as like even the you know, 20 seconds starts to pass by, even you know, or maybe a little less, uh, 
you're like thinking they left me behind, you know, maybe they never really liked me to begin with because I'm a kinder, like, ugh. <laughs> and all of a sudden you'd like see the familiar thin form of Ispen, uh, certainly clutching that green shield in his arm, kind of bracing from everything he can as he comes and he's like, Nix, what are you doing? Come on, we're this way. Come, come, you're not going to be left behind as he puts a good arm around you and like steers you uh, back towards the rest of the group. And uh, also the same with Torval, except for it would... Oh, wait, I'm so sorry, Nix. No, you were good. Uh, we'll say... My bad. But it's been... He would have done that with Torval. He comes up and... Never mind. You're like... I knew they liked me. Why are they not coming to get me? And then <laughs> Ispin comes up and he's like, Torvi, bro! You're, you're always one to loaf around, my friend. We gotta get out of here. Uh, and then, uh, I got Nick, a little lost. Hey, it's it's all good, man. It's <clears throat> I can barely breathe in here. Let's go, let's go! Uh, as he shields another falling rock with his shield and uh, you both take off. Uh, in the gloom... Uh, feel free to give a little role play there too, because Nix and Blitz, you would be doing the same thing. Um, Nix, you had a, a pretty high role there, and, and Blitz, you were under. Do you, anything you'd want to do to kind of find him there in the the gloom, Nix? Uh, systematically, not guesswork. This is out. It's not that I didn't move my character, but yeah, no, I'm I'm just I'm just I'm I'm running and screaming. Like, just at the top of my voice, just follow my screams. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> that is so funny. Yeah, that's... Like, as, 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 as I pass every single one of you, I'm jiggling your pouch to see how much gold you have in each one, just to, you know, just so I know, in case. <laughs> one of those things gets you on. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and then, of course, we're definitely not done yet. As I believe Blitz, you'll be our last one to roll the most ominous D2. You'll decide our last two. Uh... One. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. So we literally are going to do this in one piece of you. And so you guys are doing amazing. You've had one success in two slips. And here we are on to our fourth test as you're nearly making it out of here. Um, you can start to recognize some of these passageways as being closer to the exit, and yet uh, they are still just cracking asunder all around you. And as they break apart, you notice that just the dustiness of the rock and dirt is not the only thing starting to fill the air around you as this acidic fume leaks in from the cracks, possibly from some uh, you know fissure deep down below the earth where uh, this kind of stuff belongs. And yet it comes rushing through the party, and it's bad. It sickens you. It blinds you. Um, you have to do your best, of course, unless you can make a constitution saving throw. If you have any acid or poison resistance naturally, of course, uh, you'd have advantage. But I don't think anyone does. And it looks like Ispen, he kind of gives a heave and a cough. But he braces himself and he's like, we've got this. Come on. We're almost at the end, my friends. We can do this. Nyx is on fire. <laughs> Green Brian, hey, much better. Blitz, excellent roll. Uh, Torval, you know, sometimes it's not about the success. It's about knowing that <laughs> you have help from your friends when it matters. And, uh, so it's been a hell of a last couple legs as you're just like still halfway blinded from before and coughing and wheezing. Then you get blasted with this rush of Noxus fumes and you just, your eyes are a little squints. You can hardly see anything. Your breath is like short and ragged. You're like, I'm going to die here. But of course you feel like multiple hands kind of like putting their, uh, you know, gentle assuring touch, like kind of pushing you forward. Like, come on, keep going Torval, keep going. We're going to make it, man. And just as you're thinking that, Torval, the, your eyes start to uh, unwater. Uh, you start to feel uh, your resolve strengthen a bit more. Just as this section of, tu of tunnel right before the exit out of here begins to crumble away beneath your feet. Pitfalls and sinkholes everywhere. You're thinking right now every step is already just such an effort uh, to make happen. You're having to dig deep already. Like, I've got to make it out of here alive. Like, I'm going to be an adventurer. Uh, and yet, you're having to pick your way very carefully 
Uh, to avoid these falls or traps, you'll need an acrobatics or perception check. This is, again, a party's choice. So everyone needs to work together and decide what's best for the group. Acrobatics or perception. Go! Acro perception. Perception. I'm good at acrobatics, but I think perception is good for the group. Yeah, we'll do perception. Perception. Yeah. Oh, my God. That's two. <laughs> Yeah, that's good. I just have to tell you. Wow. I'm having that look again. <laughs> You're like, this is my new favorite character. I know. Between this one and Leo, I think I'm good. All right, Nix, you are you're quite the helper as your screams guided the group earlier, and this time uh, you watch as uh, Ispin kind of goes in front of you, and his foot falls into a hole, and you just. <laughs> Uh, hear like a nasty crack and he's like his face goes white as he uh, kind of slumps up against the wall and he's like oh dear uh, go on without me I won't make it and uh, you oh, go over and you, you kind of slump his arm over your small shoulder and just do that enough of your strength you know you kind of help him guide along and he's like Nix thank you as you help guide him out of there those last few feet uh, it looks like Greenbrier, uh, you kind of witnessed this and are able to follow out uh, without any kind of uh, pain. Torval, man, you have been going through hell. Uh, <laughs> and just as everything clears up, you like nearly sink into this hole. And just by like the last second of resolve, you dodge out of it and you just trudge along and you're like, I will not give up. And you make it as suddenly. <laughs> You break out. I will not the, be dying in here. <laughs> the beautiful daylight blitz. You feel yourself pushed uh, definitely to the, the utmost of efforts, uh, and you make it out unscathed there at the end as well. And uh, even with a little time to grab some treasure earlier and, uh, and one little slip up with the rushing water that seemed to, like, make you all realize, like, this is not a... This isn't a, a fireside story anymore. Like, we're in this. We are the story. Like, we gotta go. Uh, and you make it out you definitely like a dramatic movie fashion you know you run and you all dodge out as instead of like a gout of flames it's like a plume of dust kind of out from beneath you with a roar of tortured stone the temple gives in to its inevitable fate the weakened structure does finally give way fully the temple passageways and rooms collapse upon themselves with a cataclysmic crash Dust billows forth out from the former entrance, engulfing you and everything around you in a haze of debris. The ancient temple of the capricious enigma now lies in ruins, reduced to naught but a heap of rubble. And having survived the ruins, Ispin pulls himself up, the dust clouding down, and says, Whew! Well... That was something. I'll admit, that was even a bit more than I thought. Um, look, I've already got some verses in mind. I'm going to put this down. What we did will be remembered in song and story. Uh, thank you so much for this journey. Uh, I would say let's make the return trip to Calamon, where we can celebrate and conclude our endeavor together. All right, you know what? I, I don't like the songs, and you better not speak poorly of me because, you know, brand name and everything. But it was fun. Oh, no, I, I had to change a few words around. Um, <laughs> but I think I got it to your liking. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to have to like, come up with a short uh, haiku for next session. But, uh, you know, not much left to do here as you guys dust yourselves off. And I would say you make your return trip back to Calamon and even the first day would probably be mostly quiet you know as each of you kind of uh, has that inner revelation of what happened you know the blood that was spilled I um, mean you know how that has stained your soul perhaps in some ways for better or worse you know uh, you know vanquishing evil is a good thing too of course so it's not always as bad as that obviously but uh, you have your own thoughts and feelings uh, gold a little bit of gold chinkling in your pockets and such um, and Greenbrier, you know, every once in a while, you'd probably pull out that little pearl and like turn it over in your hands and you could just sense something about it. Uh, and yet you're not really sure. Uh, and yet, you know, you're eager to perhaps take that to someone back in Calamon that could identify it for you. 
um, or maybe over a nice rest, your your good buddy Blitz would probably be able to put it under his microscope. Uh, but either way, over, after a couple days, it begins it starts to get a little more jovial. Uh, then the, you know, after especially after a night's camp, uh, the the tone relaxes, and again, uh, you start to have more of a trip of celebration, uh, and even the things before that seemed so scary now you almost even jest like uh wow you know when we made it out of that that fumes oh my gosh it smelled like uh torval after bean night am i right (laughs) (laughs) oh don't remind me (laughs) oh sorry torvi had to do it to you man (laughs) and yet uh you guys make it back to calamon where you do meet for a final dinner at a local tavern uh, everyone has, you know, gone on to their own little haunts or kind of an inn or wherever you're kind of staying around the area to, you know, replenish yourselves and change some clothes and take a bath if that's, you know, that's your fancy. And so uh, perhaps you're looking just as refreshed as Ispen is, as you see him there. And it appears as he's already planning his next adventure. Uh, he kind of puts his notes away and such as you all come. And he says, friends, friends, sit, sit. Ah, it's so good to see you all again. Uh, you know, uh, okay, I've got a lot of cool things stewing up, uh, but more of that will come later. In fact, I'm, I'm really eager to know, uh, my friends, uh, what will each of you do now? And he looks at Nix and he says, dearest Nix, ah, those times we shared there, uh, I won't, uh, my ankle is feeling a lot better now. Uh, I definitely will never forget you pulling me out. Uh, what What are you going to do after all this? Oh, um, well. Uh, did, did we make it out with, with any gold? With loot? Uh, you By did. I'll have to go over a specific amount, but it's, you know, it's not enough to, like, a fortune or anything. Hey, right, right, no, just, 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 for, just for theatrics. Just, just we made it out with, with some type of something. Yeah, you got, I mean, hey. definitely, uh, you know, for a good hefty amount of gold... But not like the right. thousands of gold pieces you saw there, unfortunately. Um, I might. Uh, I think I'm going to travel, see where I wind up, get far from here, maybe, maybe not, and just wherever I see things shining in my path, that's where I will be going. Hopefully, to another wonderful adventure. Hopefully, with one of you again. Who knows? He but smiled. Before. <laughs> Before we put a double check, make sure you have everything. I don't want to make away with something by accident. <laughs> <laughs> Inventory counting again. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. Ispen smiles, and he licks at Dix, and uh, he he nods along, and he says, forgive me, too, but he like, takes your, your small ginger hand there, and he's like, well, I'm afraid you've already made it off with my heart. I, too, plan to take my, my recently right. gained wealth and travel across Ancelon. Who knows what I'll find and what new friends I'll make, but I'll never forget the ones I already have deep in my heart as he uh, really releases her hands and turns to uh, Greenbrier, and he says, uh, apologies for that scene, uh, but I feared I'd never have the chance. Uh, Greenbrier, uh, what, what do you plan to do after this? Well, first, I want to figure out the origins of this pearl that I managed to grab on the way out. And she will offer it to Blitz and see if he can maybe identify it. After that, I don't know. Wherever the winds will carry me. Oh, you did manage to get something in there. I, th- I thought I saw you hang back a second. Uh, well done. Well done. I'll be keen to see what that does, too. Uh, and Torval, you, sir, uh, you're looking better as well. I mean, <laughs> whew, we barely made it out of there, Torvi. Uh, I was going to say, that was a close scrape, quite literally. I'm feeling stronger now, though, because of it. I'm sure you will, too. Uh, what do what you plan to do now? Are you going to hang out? Uh, we chilling, I bro? Will be, I will be checking in to the local... Uh, <laughs> Knights uh, garrison to see if I have any misses from the from the night that I am a, beholden to, as a squire to, because that's all I am at the moment. Um, check in, see if a, he has any tasks for me to do, and if not, see if the knight commander here has anything for me to do, as is my duty. <sighs> Honor is my life. <sighs> Torvi, Torvi, we gotta get I you out more. That is. I hope they don't have anything for you, man, because I've got to break you out of this place. If this, if this yeah. is what it's like. 
<laughs> Sounds <laughs> terrible, man. Don't, didn't that evoke something in your heart down there in that dark, stinky depths? Yes, evil that needed to be destroyed. Ah, same old Torby. <laughs> he throws one back uh, to old times. <laughs> and, uh, and last, but certainly not least, he's like, Blitz, I have, I've considered myself more of a, a man after meeting you. Um, you know, you definitely have taught me a few things along the way. Dare I say a bit of humility. Ah, this may be the only time, though, I'll admit that. But please, sir, uh, what will you be doing? Hey, I'm going to travel around a bit, see some places you might be able to use my inventions. It's a nice old small town called Vulgar I might visit a bit, but I'm sure we'll cross paths again. Indeed so. Sounds like most of us are planning to, to travel across Ancelon, so I'd imagine we would uh, probably end up uh, back together again. I know who I'll call on if I, if I need some help. I hope I can reach you. Uh, that being said... Ooh. Uh, my friends, your bravery and companionship will never be forgotten if we do not meet again. And in fact, I already do have the beginnings of that epic ballad detailing our adventure I mentioned, so I'm sure you'll at least hear that sung in every tavern across Ancelon. Sure to be a great hit. But for now, I will bid you all farewell and good luck on your future endeavors. Uh, as he rises up from the table and mysteriously disappears into the night. It's been green. <laughs> nice. Snap, 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 snap. That was and, a good one. That and, was cool. <laughs> and then in dramatic fashion, he comes back again and he's like, oh, wait, I totally forgot. I uh, found <laughs> this. Um, looks a little spicy for my flavor. Uh, Y'all should probably have it. And with that, he billows his cloak with his hands and disappears into the night. <laughs> uh, and uh, to end our adventure it was very fun uh, tromp into dragon lance um, I'm very keen to learn a lot more and see what adventures we have awaiting uh, what is already looking like a very fun party uh, and so of course uh, we're all meeting back same time next week whoop whoop uh, <laughs> same, same. So that was a good one I enjoyed it for your log sheet or a scrap of paper or whatever you want to write it on uh, the code for this one is DL dash dc dash s d c c dash zero one s d as in donger <laughs> there you go s d what was that continue please c c uh-huh yeah blitz got it there thanks All right. I know I'm so I'm so old school. I gotta be I gotta do your thing. Oh, awesome. Awesome. I gotta do things yeah. the painful way <laughs> <laughs> And anyways, the code for it is for the, uh, the adventure title is Green Shield. It's one word, just like Greenbrier, which I thought was pretty cool. Green Shield. Uh, oh, so awesome. And uh, let's uh, go ahead and kick it off. The Pearl of Power, uh, after uh-huh. Green, or after Green, I'm going to say Greenbrier, but after Green Shield walks off, uh, you know, you guys are able to sit around the table for as long as you want, you know, having a few drinks and stuff into the night and Blitz. Uh, you know, I'd say at a certain point an idea comes to you and, you know, whether you got to shift, uh, shift some spells around or whatever, but eventually you kind of, you know, take out a little magnifying glass and spin it around and you most certainly are able to identify it as mentioned, a pearl of power. So, uh, it's a pretty sweet item, especially, I think that'll be useful for everybody except for Torval, probably. Yeah. Well, no, no, actually you're a paladin, so it'll be useful to you too, probably. Uh, you can regain a third level spell slot or lower. Uh, using an action to do so like once per day with the pearl it starts off nice. just like a nice little milky pearl or whatever but it, whenever you use it it like darkens to like a dull like lifeless color until the next day whenever you can use it again uh, so that's one of these things where everyone gets a pearl of power uh, at the end of this so Torval kind of jumping back into AL the way it works is in the adventure there's only one of them but at the end of yeah. it for for common magic items or higher, so uncommon all the way up to legendary and stuff, everyone gets a copy of it at the end. So right now, as we're ending the session, every single one of you gets a Pearl of Power. And so when we come back next session, you all can only bring in one le- one magic item of uncommon or higher right now, just but for the tier limitations. And so right now, that's probably going to be a whole crap load of Pearl of Powers. I understand that. 
Greenbrier, this would be the perfect chance for you to, to bring in your item. So she got that from a service reward. I know Blitz, you DM, and so you probably have some you could cash in on and stuff. I don't really mind if you if you're thinking it might be an item that might be kind of something. Just ask me, and, and you know I can be like, eh, or yeah, you know, sure. Uh, but the only thing I really will be trying to keep track of you guys on is the levels. And I would prefer if y'all don't like change up characters and stuff. We try to make this like an actual story instead of all choppy and stuff. So right now, for completing this adventure, you can all level up to level two. Uh, and that's going to be like the cap on our leveling probably okay. for some weeks uh, just based off of the balancing for these modules. Uh, and it really isn't these modules, but it's the actual hardcover because if you guys went all the way to level four and then we start the hardcover, that would be somewhat problematic. Um, so what you also get is uh, 10 downtime days. And there's a list of things you can do with that. If you're curious about the full depth of it, feel free to to ask me in spare time I, we can go over it one thing that's really popular to use it for is for ca catching up using it for levels like if if you don't have anything else to use it for like a fighter for something you might just be like well i'm just going to power level with this downtime because why not so but i'm just gonna this is where i would try to ask you guys not to do that too of course you know so just save up that downtime with the character and you'd probably get to use it for different things at a certain point i guess uh Anywho, last thing I'll say before any questions or anything, of course, is uh, a potion of acid resistance is what Mr. Uh, Mr. Green Shield gave you there at the end. Uh, so you walk away with the Pearl of Power and a potion of acid resistance. The uh, consumables work the same as magic items for you there, uh, Torval, and uh, everyone gets a copy of the potion because you guys didn't use it in the adventure. If someone used it, when, but you just got it at the end, so you wouldn't have been able to, but... Let's say someone gives you a potion at the beginning and you use it. Well, no one's going to get a copy of that at the end. But since you still have the potion of acid resistance at the end of the adventure, technically, everyone gets a copy. So thanks for you know bearing with me, those guys that already know this stuff, obviously. But uh, So in conclusion, everyone gets to level up to two. You get ten downtime, which we can talk about what that's for, but please don't level with it. And then you also get the pearl of power. You also get the potion of acid resistance. And then for gold, it looks like uh, everyone gets 50 okay. gold each. That's good. And I think that about sums it up. So that was, uh, I know it was kind of an off start somewhat from just random person stuff or whatever, but that was nothing. And in the end, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I really did. Yeah, that was a <laughs> I'm gonna have fun with this character. I've never played a sorcerer before, so this is gonna be interesting. No, this is gonna be fun. Um, and I will see you guys next week. Some more powerful artificer. Yes. Oh, yeah. yeah. So you know, we're all. Feel free to chat up in that disc that that thread on Discord. We can talk about our levels and stuff. If you have anything interesting about the setting that you want to share, some videos that explain things that are kind of cool, an article or just some cool artwork or anything, you know, shoot, pop, pop, pop it in there. I definitely be would be interested to to learn more myself. We're all in this together. <laughs> all right. <Yeah. laughs> All right, I'll do a set. I'll do a session log like normal, so you'll see that. And good night, you guys. Hey, before you go, Tally. Uh huh. Uh, could you make my character available for everyone so I can port it out and tinker with it and then bring it back in? Yep. Let me do that. Thank you. Edit. All players. It's kind of glitching out weirdly. I'm out. Y'all take it easy. All right, night, man. Yep. Good night, man. You. Okay, should be good to go. All right, awesome. Thank you. Oh, no problem at all. Very much looking forward to next week. Me too. I right, see ya. See ya. Oh man, that was fun. And the best thing about it is, too, is just that, uh,